I now call to order the meeting of the Board of Education of Baltimore County for Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019. I invite you to rise and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag to be led by Kusai Alwawanji from Dundalk High School. We will then remain standing for a moment of silence in recognition of those who have served education in Baltimore County. I oblige for the flag of the United States of America to the Republic when the stands one nation under God invisible with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. The first item for consideration is the agenda. Ms. White, are there any additions or changes to tonight's agenda? Yes, I would like to add item and add an item, consideration of administrative appointments. In order to do this, I ask that the additional item be considered as item H1 and that the current item H1 become H2, recognition of administrative in accordance with board policy 8314, during a regular board meeting, items may be added, removed, or corrected by a vote of approval by a majority of the whole board. All in favor of the proposed changes, please raise your hand. The motion carries. Earlier this evening, the board met in closed session pursuant to the Opens Meetings Act for the following reasons, to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom it has jurisdiction, or any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals, and seven, consult with counsel to obtain legal advice. The minutes of the closed session and informational summary can be found on our website at www.bcps.org slash board slash informational dash summaries dot html. The next item for consideration is selection of speakers. Sign up cards were available to the public prior to the meeting for anyone wishing to speak at this evening's meeting. Board practice limits to 10 the number of speakers at a regularly scheduled board meeting. Each speaker is allowed three minutes to address the board. The completed sign-up cards for this evening have been placed in this box, and the first 10 drawn from the box will be our speakers for tonight during the public comment portion of the meeting. Of course, if fewer than 10 sign-up cards are received, all who signed up will be permitted to speak. Our first speaker is Sharon Saroff. Our next speaker is Crystal Collins, followed by um, Dr. Bosch Ferrone, Diana Bergman, <coughs> and lastly, Leslie Margolis. Thank you. Our next item is public comment. This is one of the opportunities the board provides to hear the views and receive the advice of community members. The members of the board appreciate hearing from interested citizens. As appropriate, we will refer your concerns to the interim superintendent for follow-up by her staff. While we encourage public input on policies, programs, and practices within the purview of this board and this school system, this is not the proper forum to address specific student or employee matters or to comment on matters that do not relate to public education in Baltimore County. We encourage everyone to utilize existing dispute resolution processes as appropriate. I remind everyone that inappropriate personal remarks or other behavior that disrupts or interferes with the conduct of this meeting are out of order. I ask you to observe the three-minute clock, which will let you know when your time is up. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the bell or see that time has expired. The microphone will be turned off at the end of your time, and it could be turned off if a speaker addresses specific student or employee matters or is commenting on matters not related to public education of Baltimore County. I will now call our advisory groups to speak, and as we typically do when we have uh, elected officials, we allow them to go first, and so um, the board welcomes the county executive uh, to come forward and share his remarks with the board.
thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you, Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, uh, members of the board. Uh, I come here as a as a follow up um, to a conversation um, I had with the, the chair and vice chair and at their invitation, I recognize that uh, my presence is um, in many ways uh, extraordinary. Uh, but as we've all learned, um, as you contemplate um, the year ahead, we are in extraordinary times here in Baltimore County. So um, I appreciate the opportunity to share a lot of information um, that we're sharing in our town halls um, that we shared with our House and Senate delegation in Annapolis this past Friday, and we wanted to also take the opportunity to share this with you as well. So I um, was hoping tonight to just briefly talk a bit about basics, which I think many of you know this pretty well, um, a bit about our budget uh, process and, and where we are, um, starting with the basics about where we get our money and how we spend it. Uh, our current fiscal year budget, as I'm sure many of you are well aware, uh, we are projected to bring in $3.6 billion, nearly three quarters of which comes from primary sources of the property tax, income tax, and state aid. From there, uh, we bring in additional money from fees uh, like permits and restaurant inspections, federal aid, uh, and service taxes on things like hotels and motels and public utilities. Uh, as you can see on the next slide, um, our biggest investment is in our school system. Uh, nearly half of our operating budget comes to the schools, and it's obvious, I know to everyone here, why we make that investment education is clearly the best tool for creating opportunity and economic mobility among our residents. Uh, our next biggest investments are public works and public safety. Uh, there is a non-departmental slice that includes things like health insurance for our employees and their families, as well as pension costs for retired teachers, first responders, and other county employees. Uh, as you also know, in addition to the operating budget, there's the capital budget. Our two biggest sources of revenue on our capital side are general obligation bonds and our metro district funds. Um, unsurprisingly, again, we spend a large amount of our capital dollars on upgrading our aging water and sewer infrastructure, as well as um, the next biggest portion being our school buildings, renovating existing schools and building new ones. So while those pie charts provide a good snapshot of the current budget, uh, what they don't illustrate are some of the major challenges um, we're facing here in Baltimore County. This is really the meat of what uh, I was hoping to share uh, with the board in the next few years. So um, Schools for Our Future is a good starting point um, where we have a $1.6 billion investment on school renovation and construction uh, with the goals of eliminating overcrowding in elementary schools, modernizing the schools in greatest need, and installing air conditioning in all of our non-air conditioned schools. Um, with your support, I know since 2011 and prior administrations, there have been a real impact countywide. There have been 59 uh, air conditioned schools. There have been 16 new schools built and 12 additions built at other schools. So there's been a real significant impact and I know it's made a difference um, to those students and those families. Uh, but as you know, that work is not done. Um, even with the recent uh, contract approvals, um, we have uh, six projects underway. Uh, we, I think we had that updated. We have six projects underway, uh, including the two recent contracts and eight projects that still have remained to be started. Um, to meet the rest of that need, we need to invest about another $600 million to complete that Schools for the Future program. So here's the bad news. Without a significant increase in state funding, we will not be able to complete those projects as planned and as promised to communities by fiscal year 2021. Uh, the prior administration built that timeline around the assumption that the county would be able to forward fund the state's share of about $200 million to complete these projects on an accelerated timeline. Um, given some budget realities that we've been faced with, we simply cannot afford to bear that state share. So what does that mean in practice? Uh, if the state continues funding uh, their current rate of about $45 million a year, um, completion of the funding for Schools for Our Future will be delayed four years until fiscal 2026. So. Given that reality, we decided to take action. That's why we were in Annapolis on Friday. Um, we asked the state to increase their share of funding 
to $100 million a year for the next five years to allow us to stay on the timeline that was promised to county residents and finish schools for our future. From there, under either scenario, a commitment would allow us to then begin funding the critically needed high school projects identified in the SAGE report that you all commissioned by fiscal 2025. That's to begin the work. Um, outside of education, there are also another number of other obligations that we are going to have to face in the years ahead. One of the most critical is our other uh, post-employment retirement ben employment benefits. Um, as it stands now, um, our, OPEN, our OPEB fund has about $385 million in assets and more than $1.9 billion in liabilities. Currently, we're funded at about 19 percent, uh, but the safe harbor um, standard is about 50 percent. Um, in this most recent budget, uh, we have not put appropriate money towards that liability. And if we have to pick up the county's payments again, if we're going to have a plan to honor our commitments to retired public servants across our county and this school system. Can you advance one, Sam? In addition to that, uh, we're facing environmental obligations. Uh, in 2005, we entered into a consent decree for raw sewage overflows. Uh, it wasn't until 2018 that we borrowed our first amount of money to invest in, in wastewater treatment plants, $268 million. Uh, between this year and 2023, uh, we're required to spend about another $700 million to comply with, our federal, um, with the federal government. Uh, we also have environmental obligations for the MS-4 permit. Um, we had a repeal of our um, stormwater management fee, re re resulting in a $24 million a year loss in revenue, another obligation that we are required to pay um, that's coming out of other bonding um, requirements for our water and sewer. As we've, as we've had these challenges grow, uh, Baltimore County has restrained its growth of the general government workforce while trying to prioritize public safety and public school um, employees. Uh, over the last 30 years, the, gro the growth of uh, the general government workforce has actually decreased by 24 percent. Um, at the same time, our population has grown by about 20 percent to approximately 832,000 people. Um, during that same uh, time span uh, of the last three decades, we increased the public school workforce by 50 percent and public, public safety by 16 percent. Um, today, 70 per, 77 percent of all county employees work either for public safety or the public schools. So where does that leave the county on the operation side? Um, our, current balance, our current budget for fiscal 2019 is balanced, um, but that will not last beyond this year. Um, the budget we are already working on for fiscal 20 is $81 million out of balance, and that is only meeting our legal and contractual obligations currently on the books. Um, obviously, the only way to hold those lines um, constant um, as is um, would be taking a significant bite out of our fund balance, um, which is currently at about 10 percent, uh, an amount mandated to actually be at by the county council, um, sort of I use the analogy of uh, a family having to dip into their 401k in retirement just to pay their everyday expenses, something that's not sustainable and won't work. Um, as a result of these trends um, that others have identified, last year the county was warned that we're at risk of losing our AAA bond rating. And I guess I wanted to just emphasize, um, as you sort of continue with your work, uh, that these forecasts um, of the $81 million uh, shortfall for next year that only grows in outgoing fiscal years to larger amounts uh, are based on what's currently budgeted. They do not account for our new high schools that are so sorely needed. They do not account for pay raises for our teachers. They do not account for pre-kindergarten programs, additional support personnel, all things that I very much support um, but they don't account for any of the increased resources um, in the current fiscal year budget. So in the past five years, um, we have funded um, above maintenance of effort in the last five years. 
um, ranging from anywhere of 0.1% to 3.3% in this current fiscal year. Uh, I'm aware of the requests for this year, um, but um, I guess I'm here to say, uh, in addition to the request, um, I understand that the, that the um, amount does not include OPEB obligations, which we have estimated to be in the range of about 20 million more. Um, the conversation we're having with our departments and the hard conversation that we're having with our communities and you is that given where we are, those amounts aren't sustainable. So we're trying to work with all of our communities to address these challenges together. And it's important to have the conversations now because I want everyone to be a part of those solutions. Um, we've already taken several steps to address these challenges. Uh, establishing a commission on fiscal sustainability to examine our budget practices and make recommendations for reform. I've directed our county agencies to identify additional areas of cost savings and cuts um, because we will continue to be part of solving this challenge. We are also have asked our leaders to more actively pursue state and federal grants and opportunities for public-private partnerships, um, but tonight uh, as you begin your work, I just would encourage you to help us out, uh, be part of the process, engage as you are, um, and you've led the way by having the, the public hearings, which we're trying to emulate on our side now, to engage the public in the conversation, um, to find efficiencies and innovation so that we can continue to focus our resources where they're most needed. And I hope that you'll also join me um, in, in lobbying and working with our delegation in Annapolis to communicate just how important our capital needs are and how much that investment is truly needed. Um, this is not the news that I wanted to deliver as in my first two months as being county executive. Uh, it's not the circumstance I wanted to start at in this role, uh, but I promised to be someone who was transparent and someone who worked with all communities and all stakeholders to figure out where we need to go. Um, this system and this county continues to have many great needs, and we need to, to find ways to make that happen. Uh, but I just wanted to be very clear about um, the challenges that we face together um, in the years ahead. So with that, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, Madam Chair, uh, if, if appropriate, I'm happy to take a question or we can do follow-ups, whichever sort of you prefer is the best way forward. Thank you for your time. Well, we wanted to thank you for coming and addressing the full board in our community who watches online and um, they watch at additional times. Uh, the interim superintendent and uh, staff, we already have on our agenda two works, uh, two issues related to budgets, so we're going to do our work and any questions and uh, conversations that we need to have, we'll be following up. Very well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Following that, I now call our advisory groups to speak. And first we have Ms. Abby Baton from TABCO. Good evening. Good evening, Chairman Causey, Vice Chairwoman Hen, Ms. White, and members of the board. Okay, so you heard the gloom and doom, and I will tell you this, we need to raise taxes. I'll start off right there, because it's been over 25 years in our county. So that's one of the things I'd like the county executive to hear. It has be become more and more evident that we need to fight for full funding of our public schools. The BCPS proposed operating budget you are discussing is not full of excess spending. It is indeed full of necessary supports and additional teaching positions that are so important for us to move forward as a system. We can't keep saying we can't afford what is necessary for our children. That is the one thing our founding fathers and our society long ago to go agreed upon, a free public education for all funded by the public. That statement was made by Benjamin Franklin. The students deserve the best and we need the staff to help provide them, them for, that for them. More classroom teachers, supporting teachers, support staff, including ESPs and mental and physical health staff are not a luxury. The students need all these human resources to be successful. 
They also need the tools for learning at their fingertips. The elementary teachers I have talked to are concerned with moving devices beyond the one to two student ratio because so much of their curriculum is based online and the, and the supports are there. They are especially concerned with their students who do not have access to devices at home to support the work they are doing in school. While they do not want their students spending all their time on their devices, they find that the information they obtain on their students' work is indispensable to their teaching and data collection. It also affords the students the opportunity to research and learn the very necessary 21st century skills they will need during their lifetimes. This is especially critical for those students who do not have easy access to technology in their own homes. The staff deserve fair and appropriate compensation commensurate with the, their value to society. Their work is some of the most important work in our society. This budget provides a small step in the right direction. With the already visible teacher shortage, it is necessary to be competitive in attracting and retaining new teachers. If we do not fund our public schools, it is the public who will lose out in the end. When children are not afforded a high class education, hate crimes rise because our children become adults without critical thinking skills to discern fact from fiction. Instead of a rising middle class where most of our society can live a good life, we end up with people barely making ends meet waiting for a crisis to undo their lives. Education is necessary for our nation to survive. We need to fight for what we need. Please push for that support our children need. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Baden. Next we have from the Special Education Citizens Advisory Committee, Ms. Megan Stewart-Sicking. Welcome. Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chairwoman Hen, Ms. White, and members of the board, good evening to all of you. Members of the CCAC leadership will be sharing this slot at the next several meetings. We will focus on an issue or priority at each meeting with the hope that you as a new board will get to know us a little better. Tonight my topic is special education teachers. You will hear us ask for more of them over and over again. There are many reasons why. Here are two. Challenge number one, the ground that we ask them to cover. Depending on pre-K availability, elementary special educators cover six to eight years worth of grades. Think about that. Pre-K threes, pre-K fours, kindergarten, first, second, third grade, fourth, and fifth grade. Then multiply the number of grade levels by the number of content areas they're supporting. Let's imagine jumping from first grade math to fifth grade math then over to third grade science, then up to fourth grade ELA, and then back to first grade reading or phonics. When we consider the number of grade levels and content areas, it's challenging enough. I haven't even asked you yet to multiply all that by every different kind of intervention for every different disability. Every type of need times every content area times every grade level is quite a problem to solve. Then do the same math for middle school and for high school, still with multiple years to cover and many content areas. What we ask our special educators to teach directly or to modify covers a huge amount of ground, too much for the numbers we have in our schools. Challenge number two, there's not enough support both inside and outside general education. We know that our special educators serve needs outside general education in special programs, but what happens inside general education? We ask special educators to pull students out, some for daily, one-on-one, -on -one, or small group instruction. Then we ask them to push in to support students inside the gen ed classroom. Then we ask them to help general educators with instructional approaches or curriculum modifications for use with various students. Asking gen ed teachers to meet the needs of every student in the classroom across every content area without enough special education support is asking too much. Someone won't get what they need, whether it's special ed, typical students, 2E students, or advanced academics. Having enough special educators to meet the needs of students and to support gen ed teachers benefits everyone. We feel very positively about positions that have been made available in schools over the last couple of budget cycles. Continued serious consideration of special education staffing in our schools. Thank you. 
Next, we have from Citizens Advisory Committee for Gifted and Talented Education, Ms. Julie Miller-Breitz. Good evening. Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, board members, Ms. White, and the VCPS community. I haven't had an opportunity to wish you all a happy new year, so please know that I do sincerely wish that for all of you. The beginning of a new year is a great time for positivity and purpose, which can be found in surprising places sometimes. But I did find positivity and purpose in the proposed FY 2020 people for our people for our people budget. I'm feeling slightly less positive after the county executive, but I'll, I'll soldier on. We are thrilled to see the proposed increases in staffing in the Office of Advanced Academics and Special Education among ESOL teachers and with math resource teachers. We know there are many twice exceptional students who are neither getting identified as they should be nor receiving appropriate challenge or accommodations within their classrooms. We know that students who are non-native English speakers are historically underrepresented in gifted and talented programs. We know that there are students accessing accelerated math via the Head and Shoulders program that see an itinerant teacher regarding their accelerated instruction only one time per week and only for around 60 minutes and have self-study for the other four days of the week. We also know that the proposed changes to Comar Regulation 13A.04.07 could mean that each school district will have to identify a minimum of 10% of gifted and talented students per school, meaning a potential increase in the number of students accessing these services through the Office of Advanced Academics. So adding staffing in these areas could potentially be used to help in each of these circumstances, but there must be a concerted effort to do so. Two areas that we do not see addressed in the budget but that we feel are critical are a budget allotment for an external review of the gifted and talented program and money for professional learning as it relates to gifted and talented students. We have mentioned mul multiple times in the past about the importance of an evaluative process, particularly when new initiatives like the ones that were begun in the Office of Advanced Academics five years ago were put into place. Stakeholders still do not know if this new initiative is working. Has there been any da data collection to determine the efficacy of this initiative? How do we know if it's working and what exactly are we measuring? This seems even more important now as proposed Comar changes could significantly impact gifted and talented education across the state. How do we take what is in place now, evaluate it in terms of what Comar is requiring, and make thoughtful, informed decisions that move gifted and talented education in a positive direction? Similarly, assuring that professional learning related to what Comar will require in terms of identification, programs, and services is critically important. I also want to thank Community Superintendents George Roberts, Christina Byers, and Dr. Raquel Jones, along with Interim Chief Academic Officer Dr. Mary Boswell McComas for taking the time to meet with advisory committees last week to discuss the budget. It was very much appreciated. The next GTCAC meeting will be on Wednesday, February 6th at 7 p.m. at Stimmers Run Middle School, where we will be hosting a listening post. We want to hear from parents and students about their experiences with advanced academics. Thank you. Thank you. Next from CASE, we have Mr. Tom DeHart. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Chairman, Ca Chairwoman Causey. I'm sorry, I keep doing that. Vice Chair Hen, Superintendent White, and members of the board. Well, you've had a busy couple of weeks since you received the proposed budget, and I think you have another couple of busy weeks coming up. And at last week's hearing, uh, I was very excited to see that the public was so supportive. So tonight, I'd like to share Case's thoughts on this budget. But first, I'll start with vision. Everything begins with vision. You may recall that in December, I shared the board's vision as written in the BCPS board handbook. It states in pertinent part that the board will, quote, seek in every way to make the school system among the highest performing school systems in the nation, unquote. It's been said that a vision is the preferred future. In order for BCPS to progress towards our preferred future, many things have to happen, <clears throat> all of which are supported by the allocation of funds. You see, a vision must be aligned with and supported by a budget, kind of like the old expression, put your money where your mouth is. The budget presented to this board includes focus on special education and English learners, literacy and mathematics, growth and infrastructure, transportation, school climate, and safety. 
Maryland law requires that every district meet a minimum maintenance of effort in their fiscal support. Districts that merely meet that maintenance of effort have great difficulty addressing needs and progressing toward their preferred futures. If our preferred future really is to make our system among the highest performing in the nation, we must be willing to ask for what we need to do that. So as a board, you need to determine the budget needs to support our vision and send that request to the county executive. That's a Board of Education's role. Ask for what is needed. Don't cut from the budget because you feel the executive or the county council might cut it. This is a large budget, but it's modest in additional requests. Case asks that you approve the budget as presented to you by the superintendent. And thank you in advance for your advocacy of this budget. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're gonna hear from Ms. Sharon Seroff. Good evening. Good evening. I'm here tonight because I want to give voice to the concerns of some parents and some of my clients who have brought to my attention a fear of retaliation should they bring these concerns directly to the board themselves. I'm speaking concerning a lack of willingness of the Office of Special Education to provide observations from their special resource staff and their BCBAs when parents request those observations, but they're willing, more than willing to provide those observations when the school makes that request. A parent usually makes that request when the school will not honor their concerns. Um, I'm also speaking of the lack of willingness to collaborate with people like myself who want to go into the classroom and help resolve concerns that a school is not re addressing. There is no longer a willingness from the special ed office to collaborate. And when they go out, they don't inform parents that they're going out to make those observations, and they rarely provide that data in reports to those parents. I also want to address an issue that I brought to your attention previously, a lack of following certain laws, particularly the five-day rule. I recently had to quote that law and note that it is five business days, not five calendar days, to the director of compliance because one of his staff didn't provide a particular piece of necessary information to a client prior to a meeting. I speak of a lack of willingness to follow timelines that are 60 or 90 days in length. I currently have a couple of cases that the timelines are two and three months overdue. And I'm also speaking about a 10-day notice of a meeting when the parent requests a meeting or when the county requests that meeting and then the parent ends up waiving their 10-day notice. Right. These are things that need to be addressed. Thank you. And next we're going to hear from Crystal Collins. Good evening. Good 
Good evening. My name is Crystal Collins, and I have been a teacher for the past 31 years. I taught for three years in New York and then decided to move to Maryland. When I was hired to teach in Baltimore County 28 years ago, I remember going to the new teacher's orientation and seeing a slide that showed that there were over 500 new teachers hired back in 1991. But more impressive was the next slide that showed that there was a pool of almost 6,000 applicants for the 500 plus jobs. I remember being shocked and proud. Shocked that there were so many applicants for so few jobs and proud that I was one of the chosen few. Flash forward to today. Many schools are having trouble filling positions because there are no eligible candidates in the teacher pool. How did we go from almost 6,000 applicants when I was hired to nobody being in the pool? Nationwide, we are in a crisis. No one wants to go into teaching anymore, and for the few who do, many are leaving the profession in droves. You may be wondering what has changed over the years, and I can only liken teaching to parenting. For those of you who have children, you can probably remember people telling you that being a parent is hard. Intellectually, you knew it would be hard. You might have even thought, yeah, yeah, I know parenting is hard, but it wasn't until you brought home your little bundle of joy and experienced several sleepless nights did it hit you that parenting is hard. It's like off the hook hard. Teaching is like that now. It's not just hard. Teaching has become off the hook hard. It's so hard that when you talk to a new teacher, they will tell you that they literally cry often because of their job. Many cry every day. They are completely completely overwhelmed with the demands of teaching and how teaching demands all of their time. Young teachers cannot see themselves teaching for 30 years and as a result quite a large portion of new hires and young teachers have decided to opt out. This past fall Baltimore County hired over 900 teachers. However, over 577 teachers resigned in 2018. But I don't have to tell you that. In your closing meeting tonight you probably heard the names of another 8 to 10 teachers who have handed in their resignation. And while it is extremely difficult for new teachers it has become increasingly more difficult for veteran teachers as well. Anxiety, panic attacks, and depression are all on the rise. For those of you who used to be a teacher and are thinking, yeah, it was hard when I was teaching. If you have been out of the classroom for 10 years or more, then you have absolutely no idea how much teaching has changed and how much harder it has become. How can we turn the tide and not only retain more of our new hires, but actually bring back the joy of teaching? Well, TAPCO sent out a survey last year, and the two most glaring problems across the board was teaching your workload and curriculum or the lack thereof. Because as you know, some classes on the secondary level don't even have a curriculum. Teachers understand that there is some extra work when it comes to teaching, but spending three to four hours each day and eight to 12 hours each day on the weekend is unreasonable. That's an extra 44 hours a week, enough for another full-time job. The worst part is all of this extra work is not adding up to improve student achievement. In the last five to seven years, Baltimore County has fallen from the number one spot in the state to being close to the bottom rung. Thank you. And next we have Dr. Bashvaron. Welcome. Good evening, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, Ms. White, all board members. $2.3 billion is a whole lot of money. And it seems to be, at least my understanding, it would be more infrastructure, uh, more employees, maybe a little bit less hardware, software. So I want to basically appeal to you with that thought in mind. I know hardware and software can be intimidating. However, if we think what GM has done, what Toyota has done, what the United States agricultural system has done, all these systems did not really make profit, did not make our life better, except for the high tech in them. Um, hospitals, my field, medicine, without all the high tech that we use, including software, hardware, etc., we really couldn't really deliver our work. Uh, many other industries are the same. My concern that if we focus on hiring more employees. Remember, more employees get sick. They need surgery. They need raise. They need more vacation, um, you know, versus other aids that uh, come to the school system that would not really require that. I know our schools need to have safe schools, no doubt about it. However, what I'm trying to appeal to you is to have that Goldilocks kind of a balance 
That's the vision that other speakers were asking you to do. A balance between raising the amount of employees we have versus relying on high tech, whether it's hardware or software. So I noticed that we have only 24 blue ribbon schools. That's about 13% of our, our school system. So in order really to raise that number, not really very slowly as it is, I think the board needs to learn from other industries. And I have been sitting in these meetings since 2004. And I see how we drift to the right and drift to the left. So I'm asking you to exercise your vision, just like Goldilocks, and find that balance. GM found it, Chrysler found it, and they got out of bankruptcy, healthcare, all fields found it. We can make the teachers work easier through high tech, not by increasing the staffing. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ms. Diana Bergman. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, well, now I know your serious face because it just got real, real Baltimore County. So I hope you're paying attention to all the speakers and what they're moving forward and telling you of what we need. And it's not just what we need, but what we have to do. So each one of you represent a district. And you have a powerful voice. And there are some things that you need to do. So I'm gonna get to the gritty nitty of it, okay? First thing you have to do is embrace transparency like it's your new BFF. Okay, because nobody likes to hear bad news. So that's gonna be your number one BFF throughout this whole process is transparency. Um, there's a meeting coming up for the Commission of Physical Sustainability. It's actually tomorrow on the 23rd. It'll be at the historic courthouse in room 118 at 1 p.m. Um, that's going to give you pretty much, uh, you can watch the work of what they're doing and how we're trying to figure this problem out together. I've been since Friday writing to our legislators, our delegates, our senators, asking them the importance of their help from the state their voice at the state working with their colleagues on Annapolis. We need help with the capital budget for education as well as the operating budget of education. Okay, we have teachers. I, I worked for BCPS as supporting staff as an interpreter. Okay, we have communities where we don't have enough room. You are providing services to a child in a closet, but you have to do what you gotta do. Okay, we have teachers that are emotionally overwhelmed and we need our teachers to be happy. We need them to have the access and the tools that they need to make sure our children are emotionally available to learn. Okay, we have to do this together. So reach out to your community. Tell them to write to our legislators, our delegates, our senators. Tell them that it's okay, we need help. It's okay to ask for help when we need it. You have to ask for it. I'm not saying ask for 50 cents when you know you need 75. Ask for it. You heard the leader of case say it. Don't settle for the minimum, ask for it. What's the worst they're gonna tell you? We don't have it? They gave you what? You asked for 75, they gave you 60? So be it, but ask for it. Okay, it should be a healthy balance. And there's a party bus, okay, March 11, TAPCO, everybody gets on that party bus and we go to Annapolis together. Thank you. Thank you, and our final uh, public speaker for the evening is Ms. Leslie Margolis. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Chairwoman Kazi, Vice Chair Ham, Superintendent White, and members of the board. My name is Leslie Side Margolis. I'm a managing attorney at Disability Rights Maryland, and I'm both on behalf of DRM and the Public Justice Center. 
Our organizations do a, a tremendous amount of discipline work in Baltimore County. And um, we had raised our concerns about Baltimore County's discipline policies, procedures, and practices with the prior board. Um, we had been invited to make a presentation to the prior policy review committee, which we did, um, to discuss how the current practices, the current policies do not align with the law. Um, and we were hoping to continue that work with you, the new board, and the new policy review committee. We are concerned about suspension and expulsion um, because they're not effective. Um, we know that um, when they're used, they don't, they don't address the underlying causes of student behavior. They don't make schools safer. Um, they are harmful. Um, they lead to disengagement. They lead to lack of attendance and lack of academic achievement. And they are applied disproportionately. Um, just for a, an example, during the 2016-17 school year in Baltimore County schools, African American children made up 39% of the student population, but represented 66% of the students who were suspended. Children with disabilities made up 13% of the student population, but represented 25% of the children who were suspended. That is not an acceptable um, situation. Um, these are not just theoretical issues, these are our clients, and we're hoping over the coming months that you will be able to hear from some of our clients and their parents and the effect that these practices and um, these, these discipline practices have on our clients. We know that there are alternatives to suspension that are effective. Um, when good functional behavior assessments and behavior plans are developed, when restorative practices are used in schools, when there's community conferencing, those things all help to reduce the need for suspension and expulsion. The state moved forward in 2014 with new regulations um, to, to counter zero tolerance. Unfortunately, Baltimore County has not fully implemented those regulations, which are now almost five years old. So we really do hope to continue to work with you. Um, we are available to, to present, to work with you. We really would like to be as cooperative as we can be. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next agenda item is item F, unfinished business, fiscal year 2020 county capital budget. For that, I ask Mr. Saris to come forward. Good evening, Mr. Good evening. Smith. Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, Mrs. White, and members of the board, um, we are back to you again to discuss the FY20 county capital request. Um, I want to appreciate and thank every board member who have provided questions to us, and we've tried to provide responses to most of them. We've still got a few in today, as well as the many discussions that we've had over the last three weeks to a month, so um, we're, we're forward to you tonight. I know that the um, previous conversation from the county executive seemed a little bleak, but the capital plan that we have now is currently still moving forward as it relates for projects. Completion dates, that's still yet to be determined. So with that, um, Madam Chair, we are opening the floor for any additional questions, and we're seeking your um, support to move this capital plan forward to um, the next stage. So one of the concerns I have is that the questions that I sent you largely are regarding to footnote seven that is on the table, which has the idea that projects one through 15 would be forward funded and now we know that isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so I could go through all those questions here, but I feel like given the nature of the questions and that I only emailed them to you earlier today because these events have only unfolded in the last few days, that there's, not, there's no possible way for you to be prepared to answer these questions. And... Um, for myself personally, I don't feel there's any possible way for me to vote without the questions being answered because of the nature of the questions. 
So I would like to make a motion that we postpone the vote on this capital budget until the next meeting so that we can get the answers to the questions based on the fact that if we don't get the forward funding, which we know we're not, and we don't have $100 million of state funding, if we only get 45 or 50, that puts us in a precarious situation with projects we've already broken ground on with the expectation of forward funding. And I don't feel like it's even fair to the public to ask the questions and not have complete thoughtful answers because why alarm people unnecessarily? So my motion is to postpone the vote on the capital budget to the next meeting to give the school system and the board to deliberate on recent events. Second. Um, discussion? Mr. Kuhn and then Mr. Hayden had their hands up earlier. I have questions about what we, what we hear talk about, but not the actual motion she talked about. So I guess I'll just hold those questions until the time we're actually going to talk about the capital plan. Um, I think it would be appropriate to ask your questions. Okay, then. I'm going to talk specifically about the planned high schools, the three planned high schools. <clears throat> Items 26, 27, and 28. Um, so those are placeholder items, from my understanding. Sir. And my concern about them just being placeholders because we know that the planning money, uh, I guess you guys say we need like $15 million per, per school to plan appropriately. So if we know that it's gonna cost $15 million, is there a reason why we don't just put $15 million in here as a placeholder to say, this is what we're asking for, we need $15 million to do this work? The $30 million that has been set aside by the county is there for whatever high school projects that is determined from the high school study. So that's why we did not put it there because it was the action of the board to have these, these three high schools put on the capital program without funding until that could be determined which programs would move forward. So it was an action of a previous board to put them on the capital plan without funding, knowing that there was um, approximately $30 million, million dollars earmarked by the county for whatever high schools, two high schools became um, the first replacement or new high schools. So just to follow on with that, our budget that we have here and we're put, gonna vote on and push forward uh, to the county to, to fund, right? <clears throat> You just said that $30 million is earmarked in the county budget. Is that correct? Correct. So $30 million, or we really need $45 million uh, for the three schools that are listed here from, from what I've heard. Um, but that's not reflected in this document, and the expectation is that, that the county is some gonna, somehow going to pick the first two to move on and fund at a later date but we just have zeros across here, mm -hmm. which is like a wish. Like, I don't want to wish these to be funded. I want to put it in here and say, I expect $15 million per school to be funded. And then we pass it off to the county and they decide if they're going to fund it. Like, that's the process here, right? This is what we want and this is what we present and, and that's how we move forward. So. I, I'm not sure how to how to to show that in in this document. I, can we just put 50 million dollars for each school somewhere? It's the will of the board. So uh, certainly this is. I've got action, a pen. I'll write. This is an action item that this board could could make that suggestion. All I would caution is, uh -huh. based on the previous conversation by the CE, that, that seems rather unlikely, but. It is the wills. It is the will of the pleasure board of the board. So that's that's why they're on here right. with no funding. So if another board put them up here with funding, that's where it is. I would also like to remind the board and and uh, the public 
that in the operating budget, and you'll hear this in, um, in the revised budget as well, that there is a commitment to a long-term capital um, plan kind of study where we could have an external provider help the school system prioritize the projects um, based on the information and the data that's uh, presented. I think the previous board wanted to make the commitment and state um, for the record the commitment to the projects that are listed on the capital plan on the county capital plan. Keep in mind that the county capital plan is tied and hitched to the state plan. And so uh, given the information that we received here tonight by the county executive, I would caution the board in holding up uh, the county, uh, the capital plan and get moving on the plans that are already kind of underway and, and, and instead of kind of jeopardizing those projects in any way. Mr. Hayden, you had had your hand up earlier. Uh, I had a motion to uh, make at that time, which uh, sort of looped until we get this motion off the table one way or the other. But the, the point that I think we have to remember based on history is that we have to get up front saying what we want. What I don't think anybody really wanted to hear me anyway. Um, <laughs> We have to get up front with what we want and get out there with it because once you get in Annapolis and all these conversations take place, you have the opportunity there to have some exchange of information and needs and the money seems to flow one way or the other. And in the end, the one thing you can be guaranteed of, if you didn't ask for it, you're not going to get it. Um, so asking for things even without an assurance is very important. I think the thing that happened with the last board uh, really was based on the desire that uh, came from around the county that there were particularly high schools, three high schools that we, we very much needed. And so to get them listed out there so that the state will know about it, the people around us will know about it, and we can continue to push for that. Again, and the simplicity of the whole thing, as I mentioned a second ago, is that we don't ask for it, we're not going to get it. So we've got to ask for it, we've got to get it on the table, and we just keep working it forward. The state will go through and decide eventually how much money will get pushed in our direction and with our input and comments along the way, and hopefully we'll be successful enough in those comments and the input that we put forward that the state will see the logic of moving forward with the three high schools that we believe, uh, I think, wholeheartedly that we desperately need, and uh, the longer we wait, uh, the more expensive that's going to become. So I think that's where we are in looking at this. It's not to say, hey, boom, somebody's going to say, yeah, okay, you got the money. It doesn't really, at least I was involved for the first time 20-some eh, years ago on the board, and it worked that way then, and it still works that way. So it's, it's not thinking you're going to get everything you ask for, but you've got to ask for it, make your case, and get out there to your constituents and to the authorities saying, this is why we need the money for those schools. And I've seen some amazing turnarounds happen over the years where more people uh, in the beginning said, no, we're not going to do that. That'll never work. And by the time we got to the end, geez, did we get both of those elementary schools? Did we get that high school? And the answer was yes. but because we worked and we got out and went to the authorities and we had our constituents do the same thing. It's made a big difference and it works. Ms. Jones, I believe you had your hand up. Yeah, I'd like to remind the rest of the board that this is typical of capital budget planning, putting placeholders for long-term projects that we anticipate. You don't necessarily put in a dollar amount, but you would put that as a placeholder so you know it's coming and when you have prior when you prioritize it when you have funding you would move the monies there 
So I would caution against removing those or putting a dollar amount on it because as things escalate, <coughs> the prices may change. And so you kind of reevaluate it every year what the pricing is. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rowe? So I just want to clarify, um, part of my reasoning for making this motion to the delay the vote, it has nothing to do with the desire to really edit things on here. So much as it is a desire that for the last, as long as I've been following this board, which has been five or six years, something like that, the communities have been accustomed to hearing the same answer. What if we don't get funding? What if the state doesn't fund this? And what has the answer always been? The county has promised a forward fund, so the project will still happen. This year, we're getting a different answer from the county. We're being told the county will not forward fund, which means the new answer is, what if we don't get state funding? The new answer is the project does not move forward. Now, if you look at this priority list, if we get typically what we usually get, and I've been watching this process long enough to know that it can range from 40 million to 58 million, that cutoff ends before Colgate Elementary. Are we gonna stop building Colgate Elementary? And I'm asking this as a rhetorical question and to say delay the vote, to give the school system the opportunity they need to thoroughly research this. The questions I sent today asked them to research various funding contingencies. I offered a lot of ideas about how this could happen. I did send the full board all of those questions. And I feel like we owe it to the community to have this conversation openly because the very last thing we want is to just vote on this budget, we're asking for what we're asking for, send it through, and then three or four or six months down the road, the Colgate community shows up here with brand new color shirts, wanting to know why the construction on their school is stopped after their entire student body has already been moved into another facility. We don't want that, we wanna have this conversation now and try to avoid that scenario and do it in a way that's fair to the school system and fair to the community. So I understand that we're in an unprecedented situation. The county executive just came and spoke to the Board of Education for the first time, like, ever. Because we have a problem. This, the county is not gonna forward fund. That is a really big deal. I've been watching the, the capital budget for a long time, and I don't think we have this conversation in the dark. Mr. Kuhn. Thank you for your comments, Lily. I think um, that the county executive coming here was fantastic. Thank you for showing up. And he gave us his perspective on what was occurring uh, at this moment in time. Um, we have to stay focused on what we're trying to do here. And that doesn't mean that we just scale back our ask because the county executive has made a, uh, a presentation. There's gonna be deliberations between the council and the executive, and they're gonna figure out how to, to handle the revenue problem that we seem to be facing at this point in time uh, and prioritize what is going to happen. So I fully understand what you're saying. Um, at the same time, since I just said, hey, let's spend $45 million more, you know, I realize that that's a big ask also. Uh, but we need to say that here are all our priorities. These capital priorities have not changed. How they're addressed may change. And we're not in control of the revenue. Ms. Scott. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you so much for coming here and saying that. I guess I had um, one, I don't want us to forget about, I think the reason why we're all here and why we ran and everything is to advocate on the behalf of the children and teachers in this school system. We can't forget about that. And 
I think that I don't want us to get caught in the weeds and, and things like that, that that gets lost. Um, my second question would be with, I think, and it was spoke to, I'm not sure who spoke to it, but the delay, what real life impacts would that have by delaying it? What, what would that translate into? That's currently unknown. However, um, from the superintendent's conversations to our conversations, the items on the capital plan are, are not necessarily in jeopardy of happening, they're in jeopardy of when they happen. So the when is the bigger issue as it relates to the forward funding that the, the county executive spoke of because if the additional state funding doesn't come in, then the some of the projects, some of them can't be delayed because you're already in design and construction. They have to move forward. But others may be delayed when they're, get, when they're completed as it relates. It, doesn't, it didn't sound like those projects were being taken off. It just meant that when they get completed, could be impacted. And that's yet to be determined until we can continue to work with both our state and local funding agencies because the CE is requesting $100 million a year. It's a request. It's a request until it's granted. And if it's granted, then it sounded as if, based on what was presented, the projects would move forward on schedule unless if that happens later then projects that are in design we, we can't move them forward until they're the funding there so that's a long answer to her we really don't know yet we, we know that this capital plan is intact it has gone through the state process it is going through the state process and the county has supported it thus far with a few caveats the information tonight just meant it may take longer to get these off the list I hope that helped. Ms. Adekoya, you had your hand up. So, I do not vote on budget, but I do believe I can say little things here and there. Fight. Fight for what you believe in, fight for what you want. Um, with the creation of the operating and the capital budget, obviously we've taken some time to see what our county needs. Yes, I understand the county executive came here. I'm not that great in finances. I don't know the ins and outs, but I do not believe. I think it's something we take as a grain of salt. We see that we need all of these things, so why not, as Ms. Scott said, continue to advocate for them? Yes, we will not get them all this um, school year or the 2020, but I think it does good justice, the justice that the students need, the teachers need, people for our people. We are having issues in our schoolhouses where real mental health crises are on a rise. Students don't know who to go to. They need more resources. Students need better, adequate buildings. Yes, you might not get the, ish, the funding for it now, but the idea that you fought for it, the idea that you put your best foot forward to say, hey, we need this and we need this now, will change the way that those higher up see things, will change the way that we receive things as a community. We will see that you care about us as students. Those teachers will see that you care about them as teachers. I don't care if they don't accept everything that you put on this budget either this or the operating or the operating capital. I just want to see that everybody in this building or in the schoolhouses fought for what us as students need and did not just accept the fact that they said we might not get it. Thank you. Are there other questions? I had a question uh, related to the table where it has notes on it um, related to forward funding, mm -hmm. where it's not no longer accurate. Um, the other area where I had questions and Ms. Ms. Rowe had sent them in. Are we discussing the motion still on the floor? Yes. Or are we discussing because if the motion fails, then I have questions. Well, I have questions. Well, I understand and I have questions about voting on it yet because I have I have questions about it um, following Miss Rose's uh, questions she received answers on Friday related to the uh, bulk allocation issues and Mr. Kuhn had spoke to how does the board if the board wants to add planning and design for a third high school how is that done um, and it appears that in the answer for Lily's, Ms. Rose's question around the bulk allocation issues, which is item um, 
41 through 47, that that's where the current planning and design money for the two high schools resides, is that correct? <coughs> that is not correct. That is not. The okay, so could you clarify then? Items 41 through 47 are county dollars earmarked for certain projects which may change as the need arises for uh, fuel tank uh, ADA so it's not associated with any dollars related to planning for any high school. That's a separate allocation of dollars. So where is the money that is allocated for two high schools planning and design? At the county coffers that is, it is the counties they've set aside those dollars so we don't have those dollars currently to move forward yet until the high school study was completed and those identified projects from the high school study would dictate what those projects are so how would the board structurally without detrimenting the state capital request that's underway add planning and design money for the third high school? The two high schools we have, there's no planning design money. The vote that was made by the board was that the high schools would be put up here without funding. From conversations with board members, the county executive at that time elected to earmark $30, 30 million dollars for this. You know, I don't, I don't, I can't speak for how that other 15 million will materialize because the 30 million has been earmarked and we don't have access to it. We know it's there based on discussions and that's why we were able to put this footnote here after conversations with the county. I guess what I'm not understanding is because in the written answer to additional FY 2020 county capital budget questions, the answer includes the county provided funding for the design of two high schools in the fiscal year 2019 capital budget under the major maintenance account. So that was a written that's answer. A, that's a general account that has all of the dollars that are um, remaining in any projects that we have that are completed. It goes into a general maintenance account on the school side. However, we don't have access to use those dollars until we bring it forward through the capital plan. So item 44, that is the labeled major maintenance, mm -hmm. that in includes a dollar value of $18 million. Mm -hmm. That is not planning and design for that two is, high schools. No, ma'am, that is not. Okay, so again, it goes back to the question of this document is not correct currently, no, and how would correct. this board, if we're going to ask for what we need, ask for what we believe needs to get started. I take a little opposition to that. This document is what a board voted for. So this, this, this is accurate based on what that board asked for. If you want to change that, that is this board's will. But this document is accurate based on what we know. If the county has changed anything, that's a conversation we need to have with the county based on what we heard tonight. But this document is correct based on the last time we brought it forward and what we're bringing for you tonight. So I don't. I just need to clarify that. I don't want us to. So just to just to point out, Mr. Smith, and I and I agree with all of the work that you have done in making this table accurate, except for now the footnote relating to forward funding is a significant footnote that has changed. So that's but, in but line that with what tonight. So that, that this document is correct prior to tonight. So if you change anything after that, this document is inaccurate after tonight. But tonight, it's accurate prior to that conversation to see had. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, so that is one of the issues where Ms. Rowe has pointed out that the board needs additional time to deliberate and understand. There has also been conversation about how does the board add planning and design for the third high school if the board decides that that's a priority. So that's a question because this statement that the county provided funding for the design of two high schools under the major maintenance account, but it's not in this major maintenance account, just calls for clarification of where exactly does it show up and how if the board wanted to add to it, the board could add to it. So. 
those are my questions and concerns. Ms. Hen. Thank you. So I would echo Mrs. Causey's concern. My head's somewhat spinning in terms of how we can accomplish what we want to accomplish if it is the board's will. What we want to accomplish is earmarking adequate funding for the planning and design of the three high schools that are identified in the previously approved capital request. We just want to know how to do that, whether it's by modifying this, whether it's by somehow earmarking the major maintenance funds that are available, because before this moment, I, I didn't know where those were located. That, that, came, that was a commitment that came from the county after this was originally approved, after these three line items were added as zero dollar, that commitment came from the former county executive. So how do we as a board, if it is our desire, earmark those funds and in addition allocate sufficient funding to fund the third high school that we so desperately need? I just would like to jump in before, <laughs> before you get started. Um, I wanna get back to Ms. Rowe's um, motion. That's on, the, that's on the table in terms of the delay. I would ask this board to consider um, approving the county capital budget, and I'll tell you why. This train is moving, and it's going to move with or without us in terms of this uh, funding plan. We have to have the proper documentation, particularly for the state whenever we move a plan forward. Um, keep in mind that there are multiple projects, that these may not only be the, the only projects, you'll have a unique opportunity come for the state plan, and particularly uh, when it comes around again, which you, if you have, if you do approve the budget where you have the long-term planning, uh, capital plan study done, you might have additional projects that you want to take a look at. You may have Sparrows Point High School or Middle and High. You might have other kinds of uh, Patapsco. You might have other schools that would be on that uh, plan. It may not just be the three high school projects that, you, that are listed here without that dollar amount. The last board made that commitment that those three high schools are a priority. And so we know that that's a priority. We cannot earmark funds, though, for the county. And so the, what, you hear, what you heard here tonight is that the, the fiscal picture is pretty bleak. Again, the train is moving. And so if we don't approve this plan, now we've had about a month to, to kind of deliberate over the plan. It is, you know, maybe not as much time as others would want. But if we continue to delay, I'm afraid that we're going to jeopardize our overall state plan and then over, uh, jeopardize the project that are already in motion. Right now, we're in the middle. We, if you're standing in the stairwell of Dundalk Elementary School, you can look across at the construction at Dundalk Elementary, the new Dundalk Elementary School. We don't want to jeopardize the projects that are already underway, those that are already in design, those that are already under construction. So I would just caution the board that your actions tonight, although I know, I'm sure, well-intentioned, could jeopardize our overall plan. I do think that the board will have ample opportunity, though, to consider multiple projects and not just those three that we're talking about tonight. Ms. Hen. Yeah, I'm just asking to return to my question because that, well, thank you, Ms. White, does not answer how do we exercise, if it is our will, to make the request for what we need which is planning and design funding for the three high schools that are items 26, 27, and 28 on our capital request. Because they are zero dollars, we were, the former board um, put those there for a reason to prioritize those projects. And now we need to act or else we jeopardize planning and design from beginning without any how, funding allocated for that, in that in whether it be, quick again. no matter the source, <laughs> That's what we're trying to accomplish, and I'm asking how we do that as so a board. So I know it would be easy to take a look at projects 41 through 47 and say, well, you know what, we could just lift those up dollars right out of there and earmark those planning dollars to these new projects. However, then what does that do to our maintenance plan? We have 174 school centers and programs. And so what we need to be careful about in terms of some of the maintenance projects, I understand that new construction is important. And I understand that renovations and new construction, that's important. But it's important for us to have boilers and chillers and, um, and air conditioning projects and all of those kinds of things that help with a comfortable environment. I would caution the board. And 
again, just trying to lift out that section, 41 through 47, that is earmarked for our maintenance dollars, and then put that for planning and design. Because then what does that mean for the upkeep of our current and existing facilities? We have to look at that as well, so that we are not in position to have to explain why our teachers and our students and our staff members are in uncomfortable or um, dilapidated kinds of environments. Ms. Hen. Well, I don't think anyone's suggesting that we let maintenance slide. That's not the point here. The point is, as we've heard from multiple stakeholders and board members tonight, to ask for what we need. So I'm asking for what we need and how do we accomplish that before we approve a county capital request that doesn't reflect what the previous board has already um, prioritized as a need, what this board should we decide as a need, how do we go about doing that? And no one's suggesting that we move or um, delay maintenance or sacrifice any of these other very necessary expenditures. What we're asking for is planning and design for these three high schools and how do we make that happen? Because right now there's zero dollars funded for it and that's not what we need. We know planning and design doesn't continue with zero dollar commitments. Um, so how do we accomplish that? It is a board action as I stated earlier. However, when you put dollars up here, they have to be they have to be confirmed by the CE. So you can put items up here, but when you put them up here, they're literally with no dollars because the county executive and the and the council funds. So you can put it up here, but that's not what was asked when we did it before. If you're trying to change that, you add it here. I, I'm just saying it could potentially affect projects above that. We, the, the discussion came out about whether or not Colgate is going to get done. Now it feels like if you're going to add more, I, I don't know that answer to that question because now you're adding more. You're asking the county to put more dollars to. Sure. And if memory serves me correctly, which it often does not, so forgive me if I'm incorrect, the reasoning behind these items added to zero dollars was because we were seeking state approval to begin the planning process, not a funding process that would require a funding commitment from the state or county when these were originally added. Correct. That's why they, the board added them as zero dollar items. Now we're coming back and saying, okay, it's time to get started. How do we... But that, ask for what we need but, but in that terms hasn't to changed. start planning and designing. The state does not pay planning dollars for these, so it doesn't change. You can put any number on this. The state's not going to fund planning of any high school because that's not what they do. That's why they were here to be a placeholder. If you want to, I'll let Mr. Dixon out. <clears throat> I just want to add a few things. Number one, we have commitment from county. County the board doesn't have the authority to add funding here. Board can put projects here but the funds have to come from county and state. And county has made a commitment to, 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 to say that design funds will be available when you need. At this point, we don't know what we want to design. So the whole discussion is meaningless. And the we don't know what schools are gonna be designed. We don't know how much money is gonna be needed for that. But what you are doing here, by delaying it, you're stopping a process. You are sending a signal that we are not sure what we are requesting, and that doesn't give any incentive to state to approve all the projects that are in here. And if so we planning it as process is, is further pardon. down the road, we have a commitment from county for a certain amount of money that we'll get. That's the commitment. And also we have the commitment, like Mr. Smith indicated, those projects that have been approved by the board for <coughs> construction, they will not stop. And that commitment so there was, was a made question by about Colgate, and there were other questions about those projects will continue. So to talk about designing funds for schools that we don't even know about, we don't know what schools we are going to design, is a may, meaningless conversation. Mr. Dixit, that that com that commitment was made by a former county administration. Yeah. That. You're right, the projects have not been finalized. We don't know. There are a lot of unknowns, <coughs> which is why I supported Ms. Rowe's motion because based on the new information we received tonight. Is that going to change? Maybe not. But there are questions that this board has put forth that remain unanswered. And this is not insignificant information we're just receiving. So to make this decision to, to approve this tonight is short-sighted based on the information and the fiscal realities we have. Yes, we should ask for what we need, but is that realistic? And we have to, one, digest this information, work with staff on recommendations. Yeah. Is this what you still support given what was shared with us by the county executive tonight? 
from so, all that we know, the design of high school is still supported by county. If you watched his presentation, the earliest it will start is in fiscal 25. So the, the, the discussion about design money for high school at this point, it, you know, it, is a, it will have major impact on other projects that are already there. And it really doesn't have any relevance at this point in my mind because that conversation is continuing. This thing is going to come back to you when we submit the state plan. And then it will come back to you again six months after that. So that it is not, it is not a, a static document. It's a moving document. So as more information is available to us, we'll add to it. Mr. Kuhn and then Mr. Hayden. Um, I know a lot of effort's gone into this, and the prior board has laid it out the way it is, and you've worked to make this all come together. Appreciate that activity. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to understand the, the, the resistance or what the reality is from, from the planning perspective here. Because if we put $15 million for each one of those high schools, put a nice little like asterisk or footnote number by it and say, this is what we want. Nobody's promised it, even though the prior administration said, you can have two schools, 30 million of it should be in there and should be funded, but we don't, we don't know what's gonna happen now, right? From what we just heard. I guess my concern is I'm trying to understand how simply adding the $45 million into the, the county funded column here for the planning money, because it's gotta be f funded by the, by the county, right? Um, how that would jeopardize everything else that we have on this, because on this. that's what you just said. It's gonna jeopardize things that are in in, in motion now, and I don't understand why that is, so. There is a commitment letter that comes from the CE when this is submitted to the state that the local portion has been um, supported, that they're gonna support the local portion. If you add, if you're adding county dollars, we, we have to request that from the county. Right. You can put it up here, but you can request that. However, the process of this document becomes in jeopardy as it relates to moving through the process. So okay, it's, thank it's you. not that All you right. can't put it up here, mm -hmm. it's just there is a commitment letter that comes from the CE. So, it, yes, I'm sir. sorry, yes, I, I no, fully you. understand that, and this is a big long process, so, and we've only been here for so many, yeah. so many days. Um, but my follow on to that is, if we believe we have a commitment from the county uh -huh. for 30 million for two schools, uh -huh. Why wouldn't we literally just put it in here? Because when I see zeros, I'd... The, I, the rationale why it wasn't put in there, and I, I, I'm, I'm... To not pick which school? It was to complete the high school study to find out which of the schools you're gonna start first, because if you put the money here under these schools and you decide another action, now we've gotta unwind that from the community that says, my school has 15 million, mm -hmm. how do I unwind that? Then it looks like we, we reneged on those dollars. So we said, that's why it was earmarked. The county said, let's earmark it until you decide with those projects. But um, that, that's, that was the discussion leading to that, Mr. Kim. Okay, thank you. Is there further discussion on Ms. Rowe's motion to delay the vote on this until the next meeting. Ms. Joes. As we review this budget, I do wanna say that there's no question we have to be fiscally responsible. All my career I've been advocating for infrastructure budget, and this is the first time I am advocating for a budget for our schools and it's an honor. And I think there's no bigger investment than investing in our kids, so. With that, I'll leave the board to decide. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hayden? I've been around the board for... <coughs> I've been around the board for a couple of years now and been through uh, 18 budgets, I guess. And, uh, and this is... What we're doing right now is not unusual. 
It has happened in the past. You have to, particularly in this capital budget arena, you have to work with the state realizing that funds may pop up from somewhere else at the last minute. Uh, and you're able to do something. So you build a flexible budget, basically, where you can say, this is what we really like to have. If we don't get it, we've just got to approach it again the next time. You can't say you're going to nail this in with a hammer, and this is what we're going to get. Uh, all the budgets I've been through on the board, I've not seen one like that. So you have to be able to, to be flexible in saying, let's ask for what we'd like to have. And hopefully the, the state will have enough, state and county will have enough money where we can get that. Uh, and in my checkered past, there's been one or two times when that has happened. But more often than not, it's like, whoops, not enough money for that. So this is where we, we're left. And then we get to make some more decisions when we're a little further down the road here. Remember, we thought we were going to get this. Well, we're not getting that. Where, where do you want to go? And so these three gentlemen with their big smiles on their face when we complete the budget are not smiling anymore because they've got to come back to us and say, okay, these are the other options that we have. So we've, we've just got to be, and I'll use the word again, we've got to be flexible, move forward, and I'm, I'm opposing the motion that we have now. Uh, my uh, motion that I would put up if this fails is that we move forward with what we have because we can make that work as we go down the road uh, because we'll be working with the county and state people <coughs> relating to them, our needs, and what we're going to do with the money that is available and this is pretty hard to, to when you're in the uh, fund accounting business where every dollar gets uh, allocated to some place this is different uh, and it is different but it works it has worked over the years not as quickly in some instances as we like but it works miss hen so my question remains um, whether or not we amend this or not the the bottom line is how do we earmark the necessary funds for planning and design of the three high schools that the former board indicated and passed as as priorities mm -hmm. how do we do it where do we do it if Within not that. here then where because it is our decision and we're getting caught up i think in the weeds with knowing how to do that and we want to honor the work that staff have done you all know the process that this needs to go through and the last thing any of us want to do is hold that up but the fact remains we need a commitment we need to show our commitment to fund the planning and design of three high schools we've got a former county commitment for what it's worth and i don't know what what it's worth given that it was made by a former administration but how do we say to the new administration again looking forward we need planning and design funding for these three high schools. How do we make that happen? And I'm, I'm putting it back to you because as a board, if it's our will to do so, we want to do that, whether it's by amending our county capital request or through some other means. But that's the question in one of Ms. Rose, I believe, that's still on the table, why I supported her motion to delay action, because I'm not clear on what that means. And I don't think we need to act in a rush fashion tonight to put forth something that doesn't reflect the needs of the kids in our system. And I don't, don't feel comfortable supporting it as is without knowing that we have a way to earmark those funds that we need to start the process. There's a project schedule for those three high schools in the budget binder, the capital budget binder that you provided us, which was fantastic. What do we need to execute on that for all three schools? I'll, I'll say it a third time, a board action, a voting action, however, that action won't have any impact on this capital plan because there's no dollar there. Even if you put the dollars there, the dollars are not going to be used because no decision has been made on any high school. So a board action is what would require that. When you make that board action, that board action is, is still unfunded until the county 
executive and the county council appropriates those dollars to this project and an associated letter goes with this capital plan. So adding it to this does, does not do anything for those projects getting done other than it puts it up here and we have to go back to the county to see if those dollars for another high school can be added. We have Ms. Hen, Mr. Kuhn, and Ms. Rowe. But isn't that the case for all of the projects? Ultimately, the county executive holds the checkbook, and it's up to his discretion as to what projects can be funded. We rely on the county to partner with us as a funding source. Hence so what you why just, this is called county, the county capital request, because it's already gone to the state with these projects. If you change that, we've got to re-engage the state about now we've added dollars to that, and we've got to update that. And, and, and I'm saying you can do that, but why would you do that when the state's not going to do anything for those high schools as it relates for the planning dollars? We need the county to support the planning dollars. And even if they do that now, it won't have any impact on this capital plan. We're almost done with this year. So it's not going to have any impact on this. That may be a discussion for the FY21 capital plan, but adding it to this year, Okay, it takes a board action. That's how you do it. But it's, it's, it's all it's going to do is slow the process for the ones you have here that is not going to have any, it's not going to, none of those projects are going to happen now and the state is going to be involved in a process that we don't even know the county is going to support. So that's how you do it. How, thank you. Yes, ma'am. How specifically would doing so jeopardize any of the current projects? I understand we have to go back to the state with a revised request because we've now added dollars even though we're not requesting the state to provide dollars we're requesting the county to provide dollars uh -huh. how does that jeopardize so the county state would funding for ex existing projects the timeline for existing projects or anything else on this sheet when we submit the state plan it is contingent upon county support when county supports it county council has to approve those funds uh -huh. so what we are what you what you are doing today is saying that we agree with the projects that have been submitted to state mm -hmm. and you are asking the county to support those projects coming back to the high school project planning has to be approved by state but state do not they they do not fund it the funds have to be provided by the county before state approves planning they need to know that we, we need to submit all the forms that you saw in the big binder about what the enrollment is, uh, <coughs> how you are going to fill those seats. Only then they approve that planning. So a lot more work has to be done in future. But the fact that county has already committed design funds, that should be good assurance to board that they are coming. Dr. Brown and that a is a footnote. So I'm looking for greater assurance from the county that they have to what they agreed to, which was fun funding the planning and design of two high schools, because we want to ask for a third, and we want to ask those to be 26, 27, and 28 on the current plan. All I'm asking for is how do we go back to the county and say, you know what, we need planning and design funding for a third school, and if it's not modifying this document, then where can we get that assurance in writing as a board directive that that's what we want? So I, I just want to interject a moment here because those placeholders that were put in the capital budget mm -hmm. for those three high schools were put there before the high school study mm -hmm. with the intention that the high school study would inform <coughs> perhaps the board's choices about where planning dollars and <coughs> subsequent building would go and if you recall back to sort of the the essence of of the conclusion from Mr. Basu, he did advocate for regions in the county. He talked about the southwest. He talked about the central area. He talked about a couple different solutions for the central area. And he talked about the southeast. I don't hear anyone talking about the southeast, which will be overcrowded. I think the objective was that we would take that planning information and that you all would think about those priorities for where to start with the, the, the dollars for this. And I don't know if there's been time to do that with consensus across the entire board. That's the work for the next state capital budget. Excuse me, if that's an issue for the next state capital budget, then how does the current 
30 million set aside get decided to start work? It, it, it does not start until the, the outcome of the high school study and I thought it was the board's will to have a 10-year capital plan. I, I don't know. You're, we're, we were asked to do a capital plan, we were asked to do these things, and we were asked to do a high school study, but now you're going to forward these projects. We, we can do that, but I think what Dr. Brown is saying is that, that, that's why we had the high school study, so we could identify what those, problem, what those projects are. If you're deeming these projects it, they were designed to be placeholders until the plan could be worked out. If, if, if it's the will of the board that you're going to move with these projects, then it's an actionable item. So as has been pointed out, the plan is a fluid document. And we've heard from the, the capacity study, and then we've heard other things. But what the board wanted to know was the structure to enable planning and design to go forward for three high schools. Those high schools have been uh, talked about in terms of overcrowding in one area specifically and dilapidated conditions and the possibility of being a solution for overcrowding in another area and dilapidated conditions in the building overall. So that's what we're asking for is how and when do we make that because what I don't want to have this board do is vote for this and then we're told, well, now you don't get an opportunity to ask for 15 more. You just have to decide how to slice the baby in half and pick two out of uh, what's known as a myriad of, of needs. We have talked about the 10-year plan. I, among other board members, have talked about it, and that's where we have talked about uh, the Sparrows Point and other issues coming up being addressed. So there are certainly other projects that need to be addressed, but we also know that with high school projects, how long they can take in planning and design but much how, less in the construction. But how is that so. any different than the $30 million? There were members of this board advocating for $30 million and spoke to the current CE at that time. So how would this be any different? Ask that current CE for the $15 million, and now you got $45 million. We, we, that, wasn't, that wasn't something we did. That was the advocacy of the board and the community. I, I hear what you're saying, but adding that here and haven't had any dialogues about that, that that, that feels like you're just saying, let's just chunk more up there. Th that same dialogue took place. And, and, and did I miss something? That same dialogue took place as it relates to getting the $30 million because we were working on elementary schools. And, th and then the high school became a, a concern. And that's why it got addressed. I think your comments are uh, reason to support Lily's motion. Uh, Ms. Rowe. So I just want to address the board to say that all of you in your email right now have the questions regarding the capital budget that I asked earlier today. If you want to vote on the budget today, that's fine. That means I have to ask all those questions in the meeting today. Is there any consequences at all to postponing the vote until the next meeting so you guys can answer my questions in writing and I don't have to ask 10 lengthy, complicated questions you may not yet know the answers to? in this meeting. What will happen if we delay the vote till the next meeting? Anything? I better not answer that other than because I, I suspect we'll get 25 more questions that, that next time and we'll answer those too. But I mean, we'll do whatever the board wants to do. I would ask that um, board members just take into consideration what has been discussed here tonight. Certainly, if you um, delay the vote, then we will um, proceed forward with the county and we will make all of the communications as necessary. Um, if it's late, uh, we will inform the board. If there are consequences, then we will inform the board. We don't quite know all of what the consequences might be uh, in terms of working again with the state and doing all those kinds of things. I guess that we'll have to see what happens. Can we call we the vote? Yes, you can. I'd like to call the vote. Mr. Newsom. The vote of the motion is on the floor to postpone. If there's the no vote. more discussion, you can just call the oh. vote. Okay. If there's no more discussion, I'm just going to call. I'm going to call for a roll call vote, please. Ms. Ross? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasture? No. 
Mr. Hayden? No. Ms. Penn? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Jost? No. Mr. McMillian? No. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? No. Mr. Offerman? No. Uh, six four, the motion fails. Ms. Rowe? I'd like to ask the questions that I emailed earlier since I'm going to be required to vote on these questions. Is that okay? Yep. Go right ahead. All right. So the first question um, so we heard from the county executive and the footnote on the table for our FY 2020 that has no forward funding. Um, if we assume that we're going to get about 50 million in state gov funding given the governor's budget proposal, please provide adjusted cash flow tables like the ones that appear in the state request for all projects that were going to be forward funded by the county. Now, that's the tables in here. Do you know which ones I'm talking about? We do. All right. So I guess I have to vote today without seeing those, but can you still provide them? What, once we have what those new totals will be. What the new cash flows will be. Right, because the cash flows you have now is what the normal commitment that has come from the state. But without forward funding, does that change? Does, the, does this table, so for instance, we've got. It doesn't change those, pro, it doesn't change those projects it changes the timing of those projects all right i'm looking for this form i want an updated version of this based on no forward funding these are the cash flow forms and those cash flow forms show when all the money's coming in when it's coming in mm -hmm. and the dates but when construction of that happens by the dates right <laughs> so what i want is the updates for each project that currently has that footnote seven, I want, I'm looking for these pages. We don't, we don't have what the new state funding will be. We estimated on that, so our, our projection is based on what we normally get. Mm -hmm. The state forward fund, I mean, the, the local forward funding is whatever the county executive will fund, so we can certainly have those conversations about what the impact of delaying the project? Of no forward funding. That's what I want to see is what's the update on these without forward funding? Because the county executive has said, effective 2020, there is no more forward funding of the state portion of the capital budget. So in other words, the state right now has funded Honeygo Elementary, Patapsco High School, mm -hmm. Woodlawn, and Dundalk. So if the state funds, well, that gets into my other questions. Let's just go in order. All right, please report on the full impact with contingency plans for finishing Colgate. Um, I skipped number two. The state has currently approved $23,180,000 for projects one through four, which are Honeygo, Patapsco, Woodlawn and Dundalk Elementary. This leaves 26820 for remaining projects in order of priority number if we assume the total funds from the state equal $50 million. Mm -hmm. This would leave enough funding for Berkshire, however, Colgate Elementary would be short of funding by $1.5 million. Does the school system have the money to finish construction of Colgate Elementary if the county doesn't fund the remaining $1.5 million? So the projects that are in construction now will most likely move forward because they're in construction and contracts have been signed. So those projects are due course, those are already funded. It's just the cash flow from the state has not been identified. Projects further down the list may be pushed out as it relates to when their completion time is. Explain to me if the county's not going to fund the state portion, how we are going to finish Colgate if we don't get the rest of the money. The county has agreed to forward fund those projects, you might, you might. those projects that have been awarded by the board. So that includes Colgate and Chadwick. 
The county executive said that we're not that the county's not going to forward fund state funding in future. No, immediately. He told the Baltimore County delegation. But, but, but you're, you're f forward funding or for projects all the way down the list. So projects right. that are in construction, he's funding those. The county is funding those. But only their portion. They will. They will fund the state portion also. Well, the state will. F the state is funding their piece yeah. in whatever they will. Whatever. I don't will be. believe that's accurate. I think you're wrong about that. I'd like you to go ask the county executive, <clears throat> because my understanding from what I've been told and what I've seen is that the county executive is not going to forward fund one penny of state money that does not get approved. So if the state, right now there's zeros next to these other schools. If those continue to be zeros, then the projects stop because the county is not going to pay. That, that is not our understanding. Well, I, our understanding. This is why we need yeah. to postpone this till next week because you don't know. I'm not gonna vote on this budget when I sit here and I know that I have information from the county executive's office that's different than what you're telling us. I will not vote yes on this budget. Thanks. Thank you. Should I continue with these? Yes. Uh, no. Well, you all have them in writing. They're going to be answered and go up on the website still. So the public will be able to see the rest of these questions. Yes. Because I've already asked enough to know that I can't get enough information tonight to vote yes on this budget, which I find very frustrating because I would like to vote yes on this budget, but I cannot vote yes on a budget when the information I'm getting from the school system is different than the information that's coming from the county executive's office. Mr. Kuhn. Just so I can follow this um, the spreadsheet. The, the concern that, that uh, the county executive shared with us was the inability for the county to continue forward funding projects, like uh, the state part of the projects, right? What funding? out year projects, projects that are in construction, there's a contractual right, I'm, I'm, obligation. That's fine, that's so fine. I, I just I'm wanted just, to make sure we were Right, and, and we're already building, what number are we all, we actually in construction up to at this point? It looks Absco, like- Asco, Woodlawn, Dundalk, Berkshire, Colgate, and Chadwick are currently in, in, in construction, construction. Or, or late design work meaning they're, they're, they're going for contracts. We've brought contracts forward to this board. And we've, su okay. So those projects. All the way through Chadwick. Based on, right. based on my understanding of it from what the CE said, mm -hmm. he has to fund those because those have contracts have been, have come forward for. That does not mean, that doesn't mean that dollars that were earmarked for that are, are ceased. It just means any projects after that mm -hmm. are in jeopardy of whether or not the timing of when they happen. Right, so basically our ability to, or the county's ability to forward fund the future projects On, has, on the timetable that has generally been said is in jeopardy, yes sir. Okay, so, so basically everything after number, after Chadwick is, is in jeopardy if we don't already have county funds lined up for it. In jeopardy of being completed on the timetable that we had previously. Yes, sir. Not in jeopardy of not happening. Right, I'm not, I'm, I'm not suggesting that. What I'm trying to, because this, this is a snapshot in time of, of our expectations of what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. right? So this snapshot in, was basically accurate until, <laughs> um, I don't know, last Friday or this evening when the county executive came in and said, we don't have money for those things anymore. And that was a presentation, so it's not executed yet, hasn't happened yet. Um, but with, I don't wanna, you know, go too far into this, but since we don't have, um, we have a commitment in a footnote to, to put planning money in 
we're expecting planning money from the county for two high schools. And just so that I understand, we're leaving them as zeros just because, probably for two reasons. Apparently the, the order or the decision hasn't been made to move forward on those projects yet as of the snapshot time that this was put together. Um, and, and we have, do we have a letter that states that there's $30 million outstanding or is it just some kind of understanding after working with the county? It was in the county executive's budget message, so that's basically how all projects are okay. identified if they're gonna be funded or not. Right, and then um, the third high school is just a big question mark because we have no guarantee from a county executive or um, anyone else to say that that funding is gonna occur at all. Well, at this point, we don't know what high school. Yeah, I know, but anyone, but basically. Okay, this is just a space holder. We don't know. Okay, thank you. I think having <coughs> exhausted discussion and questions, I'm gonna call the vote those that, uh, excuse me? Does someone have a motion? Does someone like to offer a motion again? <laughs> There's no motion? Then we'll table this item until the next meeting? Thank you, Mr. McMillian. And second. What is the motion? So what is your exact motion for clarification? I vote that we pass the budget and we vote on it. Did we? The motion to approve the capital budget. I make a motion that we take a vote on the capital budget. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McMillian, can I make a suggestion for you? Sure. <coughs> I'm, this is your, these are your words, I'm sure. I move that the Board of Education approve the FY 2020 County Capital Budget request as shown, with the understanding that the Board of Education will evaluate the recommendations contained within the BCPS High School Capacity and Condition Study that was presented to the Board on December 11, 2018 and establish a 10-year capital improvement plan that will be incorporated and to the FY 2022 state capital budget request. That's what you were gonna say, I thought, wasn't it? Sounds like your words to me. <laughs> That's not what Rod's saying. That's not what you're saying? No. No. I make the motion that we pass these gentlemen's capital budget. I'll second. Thank you. Is there <clears throat> discussion on that? <clears throat> Can I just ask one more question? Yes, Ms. Rowe. So you guys, even if we pass this tonight, you're going to continue answering all my questions and posting them on the website? Your questions are our questions because the CE just spoke. So that answer would be yes, so ma'am. yes, okay. We, we want to know which projects he's going to fund past the projects that are currently in construction. Because so yes, ma'am. My concern, my singular concern is that the families of Colgate Elementary School not wake up one day three or four months from now, not having stayed up to this meeting, to find out that because they didn't get state funding and there really is no footnote seven, that they're gonna stay in, where, where are they even right now? Wherever they are, they're gonna stay there for another year. Where are they? Rosedale, did you say? Yeah, that they're gonna have to stay there another year. That is the scenario that I wanna answer to that if, if they get state funding, fine. If we don't get enough state funding, does that mean they're staying there another year? I need to know that, they need to know that, and it needs to not be three or four or six months from now when we finally find out if we've got all the state funding. Okay. Okay, thank you.
Okay. Um, Can you read the motion again? Motion to approve. It's Mr. McMillian's motion. I made a motion to pass the capital budget. To approve it. Motion to approve. To approve it. I make a motion to approve. Approve. Excuse me? Approve. To approve the capital budget. And who was your second? Miss Joes, thank you. Um, since this is a fluid document and the school system and the county executive are looking for direction from the board, I would amend that motion by adding planning and design money for the third high school so that the three high schools that would be asked for moving forward with planning and design would be Towson, Lansdowne, and Delaney. Second. Any discussion? To amend Mr. McMillian's motion to include planning and design money for a third high school, which would identify three high schools as Towson, Lansdowne, and Delaney High School. Is there a second? Second. Oh, I second. Ms. Hen. And Mr. Smith, I see you shaking your head. Would you please share your thoughts on that? Whatever the will of the board is, we'll support that. I'll fill in Mr. Smith's other words that he didn't mention, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we will be able to handle where we want to go as we move down the road. And we always have in dealing with the county and the state. So to think that we're cut off from doing something because we don't vote on it tonight particularly with the timing on this, is a mistake. If we stay where we are with the motion there, we have plenty of things to work on, things to get done. To think that we're going to add another high school in there and go back and march through all the work with that and get through it in time to build a success rather than coming back at some point with Oh, yeah, we, we put it back, and golly days, we ended up with one high school. So we don't want to do that. We want to be in a position of saying, let's move forward from what we have here. It makes sense. And delaying is a big mistake. We have not been given the mechanism for any other mechanism for identifying and moving forward with planning and design for three high schools. So if there's another mechanism and there's a way to do it without waiting till the 2021 or 2022 capital budget, then let's consider that. I have seen stranger things than that happen over the years with budgets, both in my years on the school board and in my years as county executive, as we were able to change things to the direction that was beneficial to the county and in the case of the board to the children of the county. I think delaying again is a really big mistake. Well the effort is not to delay. The effort is to identify and move forward with the biggest projects which take the longest time. So Ms. Rowe. So for the sake of the members of the board who are new, I would just like to give some backstory in that Part of what's going on here is that in having planning money for only two schools, when we already accept that all three schools has equivalent needs, is that those three schools communities have been used like pickle in the middle and alternating which community gets to be in the middle so that then you have all of this rhetoric, community against community, because Two communities know they're getting funding and one community knows they're not for their high school or thinks they're not or supposes they're not. And I think um, 
one of the things that's been discussed prior to even this board is that that entire process of using the needs of our children and of three different communities as some sort of political football because often the decision of well this school is going to get done and, and then there's not money for this school. If you look over the history, Lansdowne started asking for a new high school. They were the first ones to start asking for a new high school. At that time, Delaney High School was asking for a renovation. When Lansdowne started asking for a new high school, Delaney realized that a renovation wasn't going to work for them either and started looking for a new high school almost about the same time because at that time you can go back in the board and their board representative at that time was saying, hey, you guys wanted a, a renovation, now you want a new high school, okay, fine. So shortly after that, the overcrowding at Towson became so unbearable and the projections of overcrowding became so realized and the condition of that school in addition to that means that almost simultaneously all three of these schools have been advocating for new high schools and the county uh, previous administration said there's no money for new high schools at all no one's getting a new high school no one no one no one renovations or you wait 10 years, maybe never, you'll be sitting on the waiting list forever, right? So in light of that, Lansdowne's members of the board voted, let's do the renovation because if we don't do the renovation, we're not gonna get a new high school like forever. It's gonna be forever. And shortly after that, the former administration announced planning and design money for Delaney High School and Towson High School. And the Lansdowne community has the worst high school facility rating score in the entire county. So the entire county council said, no, <laughs> you're not going to fund these two schools after you just got done saying that there's no money for high schools and you convince this other school to take a renovation with that message and then that county councilman and that school board member said you know what in a world where there's no money for new high schools we wanted a renovation but in a world where there's suddenly money for two high schools after we took a renovation based on the assumption that there isn't we want the new school back so as you can see this is not instructional and student needs pushing these decisions this is politics and I have absolutely no idea what pushing these decisions. So I think that what is at the heart of Ms. Causey's amendment is to say all three, not two. Not we pass this budget and find out that, that a, an administration somewhere picked two schools and left one out when this board hasn't decided which two. And I think if this board were able to deliberate on this for another week and make this decision next meeting, we could make a decision about which two if we absolutely had to. But the problem here is that which two do you pick? Which community has less problems than another community? All three of these schools need to be done together. Together. And I think that is part of the backstory that maybe some of the newer board members and some of the newer community members aren't seeing is that you cannot just keep batting these communities around against each other. So Ms. Rowe, I would just say thank you for your comments because that is the, the idea behind the, um, the long-term capital plan and to engage again. And I would just offer this guidance um, to the board. Again, uh, keep in mind that we had thousands of um, community members um, and participate in the conditions and capacity study. And we had the, the survey and SAGE um, looked at all of the, the various factors that were important to the community. I would just ask this board, you have an opportunity now to kind of move um, this forward, but you'll ha there is another opportunity to have a very objective viewpoint of which projects should be come, come first, second, third, 
forth. Because you're right, it shouldn't be about um, politics. And we need to take the mystery out of which projects are prioritized and come first. So I would ask this board to consider, because the three projects that we're discussing tonight may not be the only three that the board should consider. There could be other projects, as discussed by Sage when Mr. Basu uh, did his report. He talked about a variety of capital needs beyond the three high schools that are on this um, project that we're discussing tonight. And so every community is important, every school is important, and we don't want to sit here and arbitrarily just uh, put some over the other. You're absolutely right. We have to prioritize based on the information that's provided, and that is is the intention behind my proposal in the, um, the, the item in the proposed budget to have a long-term capital plan. Thank you for that. Ms. Pesture. I want to start with Ms. Rowe's comments um, or the background, as she said, even though I am new just as you are, it does not mean that I have not been in the same fight for my community as you and other members on the board, whether they were appointed or elected. Um, I can make the same case or a similar case about three because I agree politics have played a case in, a, have had a place in this for way too long in terms of which schools need what and when they need it, just as you. I was taken aback because I sat here the night that the presentation was made about Lansdowne. It was a very long board meeting and watched the entire presentation. I remember sitting back there being close. No, I think I was appalled at all of the things that were placed before us about Lansdowne, their needs. Their needs are egregious at, at best. And to hear enough questions and enough discussions to come up with, let's do a renovation. I left here appalled. But I can look at other schools where I've also been appalled. I've been the principal of a school where I sat appalled as I wore summer clothes in the winter and winter clothes in the summer, and the children went through an inordinate number of issues. So I agree with everything you say. I don't like a number put anywhere because, as you also pointed out, this is an ongoing situation, and every community needs to feel the respect, the systemic respect, in terms of what the children deserve and need. While I was looking for your email so I could look at your questions, I came across an email that I received today where a person was thanking me for the curriculum meeting, my comments at the curriculum, from the curriculum meeting on Friday where I almost leapt from my seat. And the comments that she made pointed to her experiences in the Northeast and the Southeast. So a number of us are feeling this, feeling what you're saying. That is my position about putting a number, because I don't ever want to sit up here or sit out there and to think that we are bound by a number when it comes to our children. I want equity, and I want everybody and anybody who wants to come up and speak to that equity to be able to do so because we have enough aging schools in this system and enough schools that need just in an enormous amount of support. So no, we don't want to ever get back to the point where after we look at something that was as awful as that presentation on Lansdowne and a little while after that here, because there's no money. I heard it. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, uh, Delaney will get a new building. And maybe it needs one, but Lansdowne has been on that, on that level for a very long time. So I, I agree, but 
I want us to always remember it's not even about that number. Three, four, five, it ought to remain open because the plight of our children remains open. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Um, thank you for that, Ms. Pasture. Um, it seems like there's not consensus, but we will, if there's no further comment, we'll take a vote on Mr. McMillian. Well, we have to, we have to take a vote on my amendment first. So is there any more questions on my amendment before I call the vote? The amendment again is? Adding planning and design money for a third high school so that three high schools can be planned at the same time. Mr. Kuhn. So I'm, um, I'm confused because I don't actually see the money for two high schools in here. I mean, there's a footnote that says the money's, it, is that what we're gonna change? Is the footnote to say that we want three planned? I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I've asked for the structure of how to accomplish it and Mr. Smith told the board that we need to give direction, so that's the direction. Is there a specific format that you think should be followed as amending the footnote? Um, I, I, I guess mean, you're trying to earmark the- That's why I was supporting the, Ms. Rowe's motion to postpone the vote for two weeks so that we could work on these issues, not in a board meeting that's two and a half hours behind. Now, my understanding is that the board doesn't have the authority to add dollars to it. I just want then to Then when that. and how is the mechanism for the board to do that? Th through the capital plan. So the same way that the, three, the pro three programs got added, the three projects got added, you can elect that you want to have the planning dollars assigned to it and we'll take it over to the county and see. So this is the county capital request? It, that's what so it that's is. where we would add it. That's where you would add it. So if we don't want to disrupt the planning that's gone into a head, can we add an item 48? So are you adding another high school? Could we add to footnote number nine and indicate that the board requests the county to consider um, funds for designing th a third high school. We, we can add that to the footnote and we can talk to the county about would they earmark another $15 million associated with a third high school for planning dollars. We can then certainly. I would ask Mrs. Causey if she would consider amending her motion to modify footnote, footnote number nine to indicate and we can wordsmith this another time I would imagine, but to. Well, I would like staff to wordsmith it staff to wordsmith. So instead of two high schools, it'll be three high schools for planning dollars to increase that $30 million to $45 million for three high schools that will be determined by this board. Well, that, that amount is not listed here. If you read footnote number nine, I'm looking at the correct version. Funds for designing two high schools have been authorized by the county. Right. Two schools to be designed. We'll, will be we'll have to go ask the county, will they earmark another $15 million that will be set aside for another high school? And they'll, if, if they want to forward fund it and put it on the, on, the count, on the capital plan, they certainly can do that. Correct. But all I'm clarifying is that there is no dollar amount currently on the capital plan for that. Right. So you want to add the amount to the footnote and add $15 million to the footnote. I think we're asking you. How to do it? How to do it? How would you just to add the third school because there's no amount for the first two, so it doesn't make any point in my mind to add the dollars for the third school. So just say to say three schools. To say three schools. Make three schools depending on the outcome of the high school study. Great. So we're looking to you for a wording recommendation on that. Yeah, we can do that. But we have heard the capacity study. So we, we already have received the capacity study. Yeah. 
Yeah, but the so, board has to deliver it and come up with a final. So, so let me just ask the, the question. So again, when we're um, naming these three schools, then this board then is setting the priority. You're setting the priority for these projects, and you're setting the priority over the other projects that could come before the board as a result of the long-term capital plan. So if, if you're saying that these three schools then are the priority, then you're, you're really, in essence, knocking out the other schools that could come before you. And there would be no need, then, I would think, for a long-term capital plan, because you're making the decision tonight that this, uh, these are the priorities. And, the and prior then there's priorities. no point of the high school to study either. Exactly. That's not, that's not valid. Excuse me, Ms. Rowe. OK, so based on what you're saying, are you saying that if we put something in here, there's no measure for the board to change their mind? So if the board wanted to say, for instance, hypothetically, move priority number 17 down to 25 and move 25 up to 17, are you saying we don't have the authority to do that? No, we're not saying that. We're saying that that, that would mean there would have to be an adjustment and a modification to both the state and the local and the county requests. Okay, so. You're talking about that adding. Means this, this conversation that was about adding. Right, but we already have these three programs on here. If we, plan the, if we fund the planning and design of, see, because this is where I'm having a problem with this. Right now, you're asking the state in FY 2020 for planning approval, which means as soon as that the state approves that planning, it means the state is committing to pay the state portion to proceed with that project. The money, no, 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 they're not approving funding. So when, when you go to the state, this was one of my other questions that they answered. When you, you explain it. When you go to the state, you can ask for planning approval, which is not funded. Mm -hmm. But if you build a project without going to the state or you plan and design it without going to the state before going for planning approval, then the state doesn't have to ever reimburse you. If you get planning approval first, the state is committing to, in the future, when you get to the part where you've done your planning and design that the county paid for, committing to their portion of that project for eligible items in the project that they'll pay for. Is that right? Did I say that right? In this instance, that's correct. But for these high school projects, we had conversations per the previous board with the state to say, we're putting these three programs up here as mm -hmm. a placeholder, and a high school study would be conducted to determine what will be the final three pro projects, high school projects that will be included here. Even though you have, you have to have a name here in order to hold, to place hold. Right. That's that's what the state is aware of. And yes, we do have to do that docu those documents in the big binder. Mm -hmm. But we also had conversations with the state and local that local funding agencies that these were just placeholders until we can identify which actual projects will be the two, one, two or three projects that will be replacement schools. So let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. With the high school capacity study, these three schools were replacement schools for at least a couple of those options, right? So if we chose these three schools and said these three schools need to be replaced, that doesn't preclude Sparrows Point High School being added to this list further or the middle school over there or whatever their community talks about to decide that they want. It doesn't mean that we can't add other projects to this list or to the state 2021, but what it does do is by not giving planning and design money to this, potentially, let's say Mr. Hayden is right and money falls out of the sky somewhere or the governor and the legislature decide to put $2 billion of casino money into the public school construction funding program and somehow we manage to get even more than $100 million a year in capital money and we're just awash with cash. If, if hypothetically what Mr. Hayden says happened, which, you no, know, it's not really, it's not a crazy idea, it could happen. Um, 
if that were to happen, we'd be a year behind in building these three high schools because we didn't put planning and design money out for all three schools at the point we had planning approval. And so it's going to take how long, Ms. White, to do the 10-year plan? How long will it take to RFP that contract, facilitate it, study the whole county, Six do months, the feedback? At least a year to do. 18, at 18 least months. 18, right. So we're going to be, before we can even make recommendations. All right, so the answer, Mr. Dixit, excuse me, Ms. Rowe, what was the answer? 12 Eight, to 18 months. 12 18, to 18 months. 12 to 18, 18, months. 18 months, right. So we're going to be already in the 2022 or 2023 state capital request for all those other high schools. But we've got these three schools right now. Are you saying that we should wait till 2022 or 2023 to start planning and designing these high schools minimally? Because like Towson's going to be having classes on the lawn if you do that. So just let's be clear. And again, each of you has a letter from the county executive at your board seat where uh, I think he has been pretty clear and he was pretty clear tonight that planning design, planning and design won't start for any of these high school projects um, before 2025 at least well that and so there so in terms of the not having the, there is the you know this notion that we can start planning and design of that we'll have the funding um, for some of these new projects tomorrow I think the stark reality of it is the letter that we've received here that we um, that I received yesterday and that is at your seat today states that those um, projects are pushed back by at least four years and so when you start any project any of these new high school projects again you're talking about three to five years to build a high school and I just want to be um, straight and honest and clear with the public and with the board as well what this means is that if we're starting planning and design in 2025 it takes three to five years to build a high school the doors will not open on that new high school until 2030 likely mr. Dixit do I have that timeline correct you're you absolutely correct <laughs> okay thank you so it seems as if you're saying two things it seems as if you're saying go ahead and vote for this plan because certain things are being agreed to by the county executive but that we can't specify or add planning and design because the county executive won't do it based on a letter that was placed here tonight and that two weeks of a delay in order for this board to thoroughly understand what seems to be two different philosophies um, and I would point to the footnote uh, number eight, which says the order in which Delaney High School, Towson High School, and Lansdowne High School are listed above reflects the order in time which these projects were approved. It does not reflect the order of priority assigned to each of these projects by the board. The board expects the prioritization of these and other projects to be determined hereafter with the benefit of independent quantitative and qualitative reports and analyses. What does that mean exactly? It means that the high school capacity and condition study wasn't um, wasn't finished at that point in time. I remember when Mr. McDaniels added that language to make sure that the prioritization would be fair and that it would be based on data and that it would be based on what the community said. It, that At that point in time, the capacity study wasn't complete yet. So now the capacity study has been completed. So now we have the GWWO study from 2014. We have the high school capacity study. And now what the board needs to do is prioritize those lists of projects so so that when when the time comes for the county exec and for to fund these uh, projects there will be a prioritized list that is fair that is based on data and that is not based on politics Ms. Rowe. is there any precedent or any ability to change the priority numbers of 26 27 and 28 such that the number 26 appears in front of all three of them. You understand what I'm after, right? Say that one more time, I'm sorry. I would like for the priority number of each of those schools to be exactly the same. Now, this is how it was submitted to state. I, I okay. Okay. So. This is a supporting document to what was submitted to state. So, 
Uh, Pete and uh, Kevin, George as well. If the board, and again, when we start changing priorities or whatever, just uh, explain, will we have to loop that back through the state with supporting documentation before we then submit it then to the county? I just want to make sure the board is clear on process, or can it go directly to the county? I think that's some of the questions that are lingering here. <coughs> If there is any change, it, my recommendation is to make it in the next year's plan and not change it in the middle of the game. So please clarify, if the county has set aside $30 million for planning and design, when and how exactly can that money be specified to be spent? And if this board does not want to make one community the loser, yeah. then how can we add three? Okay. The first thing board has to do is come up with the priority. Because when we request planning funds, we got to provide a rationale to the state about why you are re requesting planning for Delaney or Towson and not for Randallstown. So we need, to, we need to justify that. In our mind, high school study was the best vehicle to do that. It will not only help you deciding the priority, it will also provide a rationale to the state. Once the planning is approved by state, then we use the funds provided by the county to start design. So it still appears to me that these footnotes are not correct now in even more <coughs> of the cases. Number eight is not correct in that the high school capacity study is done, so that statement should not be there that the board expects additional uh, independent qu quantitative and qualitative r reports and analysis, and the uh, statement about forward funding. I don't believe it's prudent for this board to vote on this document when there are footnotes that are no longer accurate. Those footnotes were put in there at the time this was submitted to state, and this That's is a supporting document to what we submitted to state. Any change in priority in notes should be made in the next state submission, which will be coming to you six months from now. Right, but then that, then that funding yeah. doesn't get approved until a whole nother year. Yeah. So which funding are you referring funding to? to? Funding is. State approval. It's, it, is, it is not prudent in my view to vote on this, but we're, we're gonna. I just wanted to make Mr. The, Kuhn, go the ahead. $30 million is what Mrs. Ms. Causey was referring to, I believe. And but based on, based on the based on conversation we heard tonight from the CE right. Right. and the letter that was submitted to the superintendent and conversations, that $30 million will, won't go into play until 25, 2025 based on what we heard, that we, those projects have to be pushed out, so. And I appreciate your efforts and the changes that have happened are not of uh, the staff's doing. You work hard with all of the parameters that you're given and we certainly appreciate all of that. Um, I just would say that two weeks is not uh, too much to try and really consider what's going to be best for the school system moving forward under these circumstances. I'm going to call the vote on my amendment. <coughs> Ms. Gover, may I have a roll call vote, please, on amending to add planning and design money for a third high school? It's an amendment to the motion. Oh, yes, ma'am. No. Wait a minute. Oh. There was an amendment to add planning and design dollars. Then she amended it to amend the footnote on the actual capital document. So which, which already in? The vote is being taken on updating footnote number nine to include three high schools for planning and design. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. 
here? Epstein. No, and I thought I just heard that um, because everything was already in, we couldn't do this anyway in any substantial uh, manner. Um, so no, another foolish move if we no. make it. Ms. Hemp? Yes. Ms. Coffey? Yes. Ms. Jones? Abstain. Mr. McWilliams? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Abstain. Abstain. Did I get the number? Six. We're going to vote on the motion. The second amendment, the first amendment now? The first amendment now. We're going to vote on the first amendment. That adds up. The amendment is proposed. Yes, it carries. It goes student. Student doesn't vote. Can the chair specify if the amendment carried since it's an amendment to a motion? Did the vote carry or did it fail? Excuse me, the vote did not carry. It was six votes for and it carried. It carried. That carried. That carried oh, because I'm sorry. Vote. Okay, so that vote carried. And now, can you restate the? So the original amendment was to add the planning and design money for the third high school, identifying the three high schools as Towson, Lansdowne, and Delaney. If I could have a roll call vote, please. Ms. Rob. Can I just have clarification on, so we're amending the motion to approve the budget. That amendment was for nine. What is this amendment on? Just to the motion to approve? Can you specify what we're voting on? We're voting on the motion to identify the three high schools. Oh, okay. What was the answer to the question in terms of being locked in if you say three and another school comes up something? Someone, you know what I'm saying? What was the answer to that question? I thought we could always modify it. You can always, okay. I want to hear from, did you say whoever answered it? You can modify it, but the funding being attached to the school could give the impression that these are the projects, but it could be modified. But it, it, it just gives, it gives a, it gives an impression that these are the schools that we have decided to do, which could be problematic. Does it that. give the impression that these are the priority schools that's right, that we've yes. chosen? Okay. The priority and the funding. That's if I understand the motion, we're we're identifying those schools and we're identifying planning dollars for these schools. So if any others come into play, they would either have to come after these or you'd have to change these, which could delay how they're being brought forward. What are we doing? Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, Ms. Mack? But we would not be prohibited from changing the, the third school or one of the three schools. You wouldn't be prohibited, but bear in mind, it is a fluid document in that, that changing those projects in and out, that's, that's, it's labor intensive. It just requires that we have to resubmit, adjust that submission, and, and reallocate what that project is. It, it just gets complicated. So you're, you're, you're in essence basically saying that these are the projects with or without the high school study, this is what we're doing. And that is the board's will. That's the board's obligation if you choose to do that. But it, it basically is saying that the high school study is these are the three schools we're gonna do in priority order with funding, with planning dollars. Thank you. So. We haven't deliberated on the priority of the schools post the high school study. And I sincerely believe as a planner, schools should go where they're needed, not where people want them, where they're most needed. And that's what we should do as a board, give an unbiased opinion of where the school needs to go. And I don't think we're ready. We haven't deliberated where those priority right. schools are. And we need to do that before we vote on three schools. It wouldn't be fair. It's uh, premature, and I think as a new board, we have to deliberate where are those priority schools, where are they most needed, not where they're most wanted. 
And I do this on a daily basis. We don't put infrastructure where it's most wanted, but where it's most needed. Where are the schools that are failing? Where are the schools that most need it? And I feel very strongly about it, so I think we need to wait on that, deliberate as a board, and agree on where those three or four schools have to be. Thank you, Ms. Joes, for that. And that Thank was uh, the intent of the original motion, was to delay the vote until the board had opportunity to deliberate based on uh, questions that were submitted and requested to be answered. I know that I submitted questions that we haven't gotten to yet, and um, it's 10.30, so um, we're going to vote on the second amendment, which is to identify the three schools, and that identification can occur in the footnote along with the amendment that we just passed. So we're, we're let me make sure, I, so we're not going to put dollar amounts by 26, 27, and 28, we're just going to add in the footnote that we're requesting an additional $15 million, additional planning for, I'm sorry, for three high schools, meaning that's going to be another $15 million. Is that what you're saying? Yes, and identifying them. And then by doing so, by identifying them, then we take it back and then bring it back to the, the county. We have to take it back mm -hmm. to the state for that, right? You say identifying them, you mean that the three that's listed here are the high schools that will be Footnote nine. That will be the projects that we're going to do whenever the high school dollars become available. About identifying those projects, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, Mr. Kuhn. Just uh, something you just said, um, Ms. White. Um, since those three schools are already on a list, they've been identified. Are you saying that they are just clear placeholders that have no, they, they could be school A, B, and C, but you have to put an actual name in the list w right. to hold something, right? That's right. They we had placeholders exactly right. related to these schools in lieu of the high school study being completed and a decision being made by a board of which schools would be one, two, and three. If I hear the action correct tonight, we're asking for planning dollars for three high schools, and we're identifying what those three schools are tonight and I in lieu that of that the capital plan. In lieu of the is to designate high school those level. dollars, correct? To the, designate that motion those would dollars. Be to designate those dollars, so then those schools would be identified because the dollars then would be attached to those projects. It would no longer just be a placeholder, correct. but they would be identified dollars for those projects. So then, in essence, you are identifying the priority. Yes. It just uh, another point of clarification. When you say high school study. You're not talking about the capacity study that was completed. We are, yes, sir. Oh, you are talking we're, about. We're talking about the high school because you just keep saying it's not completed. So I'm, cons I'm wondering. Complete. It's but the complete. De the, the deliberation about the priority order from this board about which high schools, based on the recommendations, okay, thank or you. not. I just, yes, I just, That's good because I, I know that you've talked about a 10-year capital plan, and I don't want to conflate the two or think that there's something else out there. Yes, so the high school capacity study was to determine where the seats were needed, right. would be needed over the next several years. Mm -hmm. And then um, we asked SAGE to consider not only seats, but the conditions of schools as well. So they used the GWW information as well as the community input and thinking about where those seats would be needed to then give the suggestions that they brought to the board. And now at this point, there's a, there's a need to now prioritize those projects so that we'll know who should come first, second, or third. Um, and that's a, that was the reason for the placeholders and the, with the prior board to put that there to say that we do want to make sure that we have those placeholders there, but there, was no, there were no funds directly tied to right. it. If we're saying tonight, based on this motion, that there would be funds tied to these projects, then we are in essence, or the board is in essence, identifying the priority. Ms. Pasture, I'm separating on it, and that is, we are, 
I clearly, for one of them, obviously I'm biased because I've already spoken, but I'm just worried that given the amount of time now as we go down the road, we are naming three. Suppose something comes up, and I've seen this happen. We've all seen this happen where things change, population change, any number of things change, and there's another school that crops up. So you're saying we have to go through this process again. We can make the change so we're not held to the three, but we would have to go through another arduous process to say this one should now be a part of the three as opposed to the three that... That's one way to say it. I, I, I'll try to clarify it a little bit more. I'm saying if, if you put dollar amounts beside these programs, these three projects, the presumption is from those communities that they have funding to do these projects moving forward. So if you change them, which this board has the right to do that, n now you've got to explain to those communities that you had $15 million for planning. Now I'm taking that back because we're going to do something else. It, it gets confusing to the communities when you do that, when you put it on. And, and, and it has happened before, projects that have come on and gone off because of enrollment and things that, that issue, things of that concern. I'm saying if you put the $15 million beside these three projects, you can do that. It, 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 it has an assumption that these are the projects, and so if you change it at a later date, those communities could say, I had dollars associated to, to my school, where does it go? Right. Thank you. I mean, it really was rhetorical. I knew I'd... Thank Ms. you. Ms. Rowe. That's what makes me... We're talking like we're only allowed to ever do three high schools. There can be a fourth, fifth, and sixth later down the road, right? I mean, we don't have to do just three high school projects, right? That, that is correct. Um, right, okay. I, all I would say is from the high school capacity study, it indicated staging is important. Which, which one you do first, second, and third is important as it relates to how to get the best value out of your projects, meaning seat needs, conditions, and trying to keep uh, Contiguation, contiguation of existing communities. So it, it, it's a few other factors than just saying these were the placeholders, let's just put these. You can do that, but I'm just saying the high school capacity study got, gave recommendations based on feedback from the community about what they wanted and how it would best, how you best should stage them as it relates to the decisions that this board makes. Clearly, there's a need for conversation around this. We are going to have a vote shortly, but if, if the votes fail, then the next reasonable thing would be to do what Ms. Rowe suggested uh, quite some time ago, which is to delay by two weeks. Um, so the, and, and the other thing that I would point out is that there have already been school communities that have had planning and design allocated and then pulled away. What the members of this board that are trying to identify these schools is to not have these communities compete, but rather to start these three very necessary projects to improve the learning condition of those students in those schools and those students that are in relocatable classrooms in order to start the planning. And the planning process is the one that can decide which ones of these projects will be shovel ready first. There's a lot of planning that has to take place, but until we start that, then we won't know when these projects are gonna be able to be done. And if we kick this can down the road again, it will o only extend the time. So we should move forward on planning and design let the planning process work. And the other issue is there are uh, possibilities for additional funding coming out of legislation that's proposed in Annapolis. And we're moving forward, identifying these projects will allow us to be in the best position to gain those funds in the future by setting as a board that these are priorities that we need. We know that. Ms. Hennon, 
Thank you, Mrs. Causey. So a point of clarification, because it's been a while since the motion was introduced. The motion on the floor is to add a second amendment to footnote nine to name the three schools that we are prioritizing for funding. There's no dollar amount tied to that in the current footnote nine. So, you know, 30 million keeps getting tossed out. That is a soft number, I would say, because we don't know for sure that there's going to be a need for another 15 million. Maybe we do all three for 40 million. What? That's not the current amendment motion. That is what Mrs. Cosey meant? No. Can you state the current one? In footnote nine. In footnote nine. That was already voted on. No, we're, I think this is a second so you're amendment. The motion, if that's, yes. If that's part of the motion, the motion needs to be changed, the amendment needs to be changed, because that's not what was originally moved. Mrs. Causey, it was your motion, so do you want to clarify? We voted to amend for three high schools, and now we're identifying the high schools. In footnote nine, correct? In footnote nine. That's not if that's, the, if that's the intent of the motion, it needs to be changed because the motion didn't say that originally. So I just want to make sure that the record's clear about what the motion is. Is it the motion or the amendment? It's, it's the, the amendment. It's the amendment. Okay. Because Mr. McMillian still has a motion that we have right. not yet voted on. Right. But that amendment has now morphed into a different thing, so I think it needs to be restated so that the record's clear about what it is. Okay. So does Ms. Gover have the statement? So then if I'm, if I'm restating it for clarification, then this is the amendment. Okay. Well, they were restating what the motion was intended in August 2nd, it was that's fine. I think what you're talking about is not what the motion originally said. Because he has these on the one that's going to amend it. That's Thank you. So the amendment was to add planning and design money for a third high school. Where is your that, motion? Where? And where it resides is currently in footnote nine. Where is yours? So currently there's no Do we do right his now. at some point? Or we? Uh, so are the, are the three high schools being named or not in the motion? Because it's very And then we'll get to his. Okay. Yes, they're being named. Okay. Can I just ask somebody to, so that everybody knows and so the record's clear, exactly the, the wording from beginning to end of what the amendment is? Hear ye, hear ye. I don't think she does. That's, That's why I'm asking for it. Stands. I need my friend William T. Newton, who is the ultimate constitutionalist, to come in no, and speak to So the last, the last amendment carried to right. amend footnote 9 to indicate that funds for designing three high schools are requested. Mrs. Causey's amendment to Mr. McMillian's motion, I believe, is to name those three schools in footnote nine. So this is a second change to footnote nine to name those three schools. The And the point I made was that there are no dollar amounts no, but, but currently that's, that's, on. That, okay. That, that's not the issue. The issue is what is then the actual amendment that's being voted on? Clarify your is it when Ms. Thank Gover you. was read or something else? Thank you, Ms. Gover. If you could, if you could read that or hand that to Ms. Hen. Then we'll have to clarify. All right. 
Just a moment while we clarify that. Well, can we introduce the lady who's been here all night, who's new? <laughs> can't go out of order. Can't go out of order. Have we introduced the new person who's here? She's still here. <laughs> oh, God. Why can't we introduce them so that they get into the room? <laughs> They'll change their minds. <laughs> you got to get the there. The the amendment to Mr. McMillian's motion is to include planning and design money for a third high school with them identified as Towson, Lansdowne, and Delaney High Schools. So just as in footnote nine, there is not a dollar amount that is included in that. Okay, so I restated the motion. If we can have a roll call vote, please. So, just so I can make sure I'm clear. So, it's a footnote nine. It's going to include a third high school. That's it for footnote nine? Include planning and design money for a third high school identified as Towson, Lansdowne, and Delaney High Schools. Okay, so we're identifying the high school. Okay. Okay, Ms. Gover, if I could have a roll call vote, please. Yes. Mr. Kim? Aye. Emphatically no. <laughs> Ms. Penn? Yes. Ms. Cosby? Yes. Ms. Jones? Abstain. Mr. McMillian? Abstain. Oh, man. This is going to pass on three. Yes. Ms. Scott? Abstain. Mr. Abstain. Uh, that was a vote for five many abstentions, so that motion fails. So we're now going to vote on Mr. McMillian's uh, motion to adopt the capital uh, county request. If I could have a roll call vote. Well, Excuse me, Mr. Kuhn. So just so I'm clear as to what we're actually voting on, because the, the second amendment passed, but the first amendment didn't pass. So we're now talking about voting on the original capital plan with the second amendment. My understanding, and I don't know, my understanding is that the motion is to adopt or to, or to uh, approve what was the budget that was presented as amended by amending footnote nine as was previously passed by the board. Correct. Okay. Thank you. I think. Can we read that, please? Ms. Gover, can you please read the amendment that passed? Thank you. We could have a roll call vote now. Ms. Rao? Yes. Can we read the motion again? The motion on the table to approve the 2020 county capital budget with the amendment as stated previously. Mm -hmm. No. No, we, we just had it. Okay, as long as you're clear. Aye. Ms. Pasture? Yes. Mr. Haven? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Cosby? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Mr. Alton? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. The next item is item G, new business, personnel matters. For that, I call Dr. Mayo forward, please.
Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chairwoman Hen, Superintendent White, members of the board. I'd like board consent for the following personnel matters, retirements, and resignations. Do I have a motion? Do I have a motion to approve the personnel matters as presented in exhibits G1 and G2? Motion. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. The next agenda item is H, new business administrative appointment. For that, I call on Ms. White. Thank you. Members of the board, I would like to bring forward for your approval the position of senior auditor for the Office of Internal Audit. Do I have a motion to approve the administrative appointment as, as presented in Exhibit H1? Motion. Do I have a second? Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. White, if you'd like to please recognize our administrative appointment. Thank you, and I'd like to thank our new administrative appointments for their patience uh, and to acknowledge them and ask them to stand um, when I call their names. So for tonight's administrative appointments for senior auditor, the new senior auditor in the Office of Internal Audit is Lauren Crew. If you'll please stand along with your family. <laughs> Congratulations. Do you have anyone here with you this evening? Okay, thank you and welcome, welcome. I'd also like to recognize uh, Mr. Duane Edwards, who will also be a senior auditor in the Office of Internal Audit. He was appointed at the last meeting, so would you please stand as well? <laughs> Congratulations. Do you have anyone here with you this evening? I have my uh, wife, Teresa. Very good. Congratulations. The next item is item A, consideration of action taken in close session. In the interest of time, I am going to call for a motion to approve the actions taken in closed session on January 8th and January 22nd, 2019. Second. Just, just as a reminder, that includes three um, appeals that the board heard tonight in, on uh, confidential employee and student matters. One was an oral argument, two were on the record. It was hearing examiner numbers 1863 was oral argument, 1907 and 1918 were summary affirmances. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion to accept? All in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, thank you. Any opposed? The please motion. Make sure you sign the orders before we leave. Thank you. The motion carries. Thank you. Our next item is J, new business contract awards. For that, I ask Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit to please come forward. So uh, we have one item uh, for consideration, contract JBO 707-19, on-call snow removal and associated services. This is a new competitively bid contract for on-call snow removal and associated services for the Department of Facilities Management for various schools and offices. Approval is requested for a two-year, three-month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $186,800. Do I have a motion to approve item J1? Uh, do I have a second? second? Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? The motion carries. The next item of business is item K, new business, work session on fiscal year 2020 operating budget. For that, uh, I will call forward Mr. Smith, Mr. Saris, and Mr. Tantliff to come to the table. So, members of the board, I would ask your consideration, given the hour, and I'm sure that members of the public would 
um, uh, be interested in, in this discussion. I am going to present a revised um, budget as requested by the board chair and vice chair. Um, they asked that I would present a um, revised, revised budget based on maintenance of effort. I can present that budget um, to you tonight and then I would ask your consideration in having the work session at our next meeting where we would have more time for questions and discussion. Um, is that going to jeopardize our time? Time frame, I should ask. No. We would be able to do that. Ms. White, uh, should we make a motion for that? I would, it would be sort of an amendment. Um, okay. Second. <laughs> okay. So. so we are designating that uh, we will have a work session on February 5th related to the operating budget and that uh, the vote for the operating budget would take place at the meeting after. February 5th. Yes. And so tonight, I, I promise I won't keep you long, but I, um, for your consideration, I'll just go through what we have thus far so that you can have uh, information to, to consider as we're moving forward to, uh, to the next session. So again, good evening to everyone, uh, members of the board and to the public as well. Two weeks ago, I proposed an operating budget for the FY 2020 um, operating budget that was based on data based on the needs of our system and feedback that I've heard from parents, staff, and the community during the past two years. My proposal focused on investing in people for our people to support our students and educators with the necessary staffing and resources that we need. Tonight, again, at the request of the board chair and vice chair, um, I'm bringing to you a revised proposal that takes into account recent conversations had with county government about the stark fiscal realities in Baltimore County as outlined by the county executive uh, tonight. Given these realities, it is my responsibility to propose a budget that is as close as possible to maintenance of effort or, um, or MOE as we, we many times will abbreviate it. So let me start by giving an, ex an explanation of maintenance of effort. Uh, maintenance of effort establishes a floor for per student funding from one year to the next. While adjustments are made as our schools continue to welcome more students, MOE does not take cost increases into account from year to year. In essence, MOE buys us less as prices go up. In order to propose a budget at maintenance of effort, my team and I took a hard look at our absolute necessities. My, pro my, pri my priority was and will always be protecting our classrooms and ensuring the continuity of high quality responsive instruction every day. With our students foremost in mind, my revised budget proposal remains focused on our original goals, including people for our people. At the direction, again, of the board chair and vice chair, I have been asked to preserve as much of the staffing requests as possible, which means that, elimin that which means eliminating cost of living adjustments and step increases, because it's, you can't do both in terms of preserving the staff request and trying to preserve the cost of the step increases and the cost of living increases. Uh, this proposal does pre preserve cur current staffing and the instructional uh, program, as well as requesting scaled back increases in staff who directly impact students. But let me be clear, maintenance of effort does not allow us to add the levels of new staffing that we have advocated for and that would meet the needs expressed by our communities uh, over the past several years. I am committed to honest and transparent ongoing discussions with all stakeholders about our future as a county. In fact, while this is the operating budget proposal, again, as we have been through tonight, it is important for us to understand our fiscal situation and the county's financial situation as it pertains to our capital budget uh, for completing the projects. And we've had lots of discussion about that this evening. I promise that I will never stop asking for what our students and schools need. Many times there has been a perception that the county gives us a, an amount and then we try to fit in within that. As you can 
could see by this budget and the budget request, I did not do that. I did ask for what we need, and it's not all that we need. Uh, we need much more than what was proposed. I know that it was 11% over MOE, but it was 11%, which is just really a drop in the bucket to what we really need. And so this request uh, that I had proposed to, uh, two weeks ago was based on those needs and based on that feedback. So in terms of what has changed then in this revised budget that I've been asked to bring forward, this when we look at balancing our priorities, uh, in, we've, we're looking at maintenance of effort, we're able to maintain the majority of the proposed positions. 248 of the 316 positions in the proposed um, budget can be maintained. Our textbook support can be maintained. We've revised our digital resource plan that will deliver another $4.5 million. If you remember, we talked about the planned savings from STAT at $4.5 million in the FY20 budget. This is another $4.5 million, and I'll explain how we get there a little bit later in this presentation. Again, the adjustments and the things that we've had to take a hard look at would be the reduction of our cost of living increases and our step increases, with the exception of the 3% overlap. Many of you know that a 3% increase went into this January, this month, that would go until next December. Uh, but the proposal for an additional um, step increase or uh, for the additional funding that would have gone in place for July 1 would not do so. Um, this eliminates the proposal to extend the school day by 15 minutes. It also eliminates the majority of the propo proposed non-personnel items with the exception of critical textbooks. When it comes to special education and our English learners, my position has not changed. Um, as CAO and as superintendent, I have always advocated for special education teachers and ESOL teachers because they are our uh, priority based on our population. I will continue to do so. So this budget proposal, the revised proposal, maintains that, that same request. Uh, two weeks ago, I proposed 50.5 FTEs for special education. I'm still doing so in this um, request. The social emotional teachers that we were planning to take off the third party, party billing grant, we will maintain on the third party billing grant. The ESOL program support, those FTEs are still in this request due to our growing population. So when it comes to literacy and mathematics, to that end, this budget proposal would allow us to continue efforts to support our schools, including an increased emphasis on math professional development. We know that math has been an area of focus for us as well. And this also allows us to reinstate funding to our magnet programs that we've heard from our magnet schools, as well as a continued investment in our GT and science programs as well. With the exception of Passport, almost all of the proposed positions to support literacy and mathematics um, have been preserved here. We've also found a way to support the expansion for Magnet, for AVID, and for college readiness. Other programs will be maintained at the current levels. Instructional materials and textbooks will remain in the budget. The changeover to Chromebooks at the elementary level and the two to one ratio adjustment in grades K through two will deliver an additional reduced expense of $4.5 million in FY20. So the STAT program costs will go down overall by $9 million in the next fiscal year. As for growth and infrastructure, Again, this revised proposal takes into account the, the stark fiscal realities in Baltimore County. And given these realities, again, it is my responsibility to propose a budget that is as close to MOE as possible. At this maintenance of effort level, the budget cannot support longevity step increases or COLAs outside of the overlap, again, that, that began July, uh, January 1st. Uh, that was negotiated as a 3% increase. This budget maintains employees' current salaries, the, and the 15-minute school day extension, however, again, will not be funded. 
We made a concerted effort to shrink central office um, to support schools in FY19. Many of you will recall we shrunk central office to give back directly to schools, particularly those small schools that did not have assistant principals. So we did that in FY19. As you will see on the next two slides, uh, the growth and in infrastructure related to these positions are maintained with the exception of additional high school teachers to improve uh, classroom ratios. So with this adjustment, um, this will not account for those high school teachers, which would have reduced uh, class sizes. We are also funding a long-term capital study. We've talked about that a, a quite a bit tonight uh, for $750,000 that has been requested by the community. And AV equipment has been removed from the budget. When it comes to transportation, transportation is still an area of focus for us. Our commitment to transportation remains strong. The six bus attendants requested, as well as the uh, 28 uh, redirected positions, can still be supported in an MOE budget. When it comes to climate and safety, again, it's important to, to know about student behavior, discipline, all of that goes into how we feel when we're in a school. Um, although the overall number of school climate and safety related positions will drop somewhat in my revised budget proposal, we will still be adding counselors, social workers, psychologists, security patrol officers, and health assistants. We will be able to support one-time funding of school security upgrades. The next slide shows the reductions that will impact our requests for athletic trainers, a reduction in, in health support, as well as reductions in professional development related to school climate, discipline, and behavior support. So when it comes to the revised FY20 operating budget, while maintaining almost 80% of our originally requested positions, my revised FY20 budget reduces the proposed budget by $85.7 million. Under my revised 20, FY20 proposed budget, which follows uh, guidance, again, from the county executive, again, you have the letters in front of you in terms of your seats, as well as the board officers, we are very close to maintenance of effort, just 0.7%, or $5.4 million above that level. And again, the timeline that you see here, I would, uh, we've already uh, talked about changing that so that we have a, additional time of work with the board officers um, to look at the new timeline for questions. But again, this budget um, is not what I had originally proposed, but I understand the fiscal realities that are in front of us, and I understand um, why this re request was made. Again, we, we do have to advocate for what we need. We need to advocate for our teachers and for our students most of all and I believe that my original request did so um, based on what we need many people have asked me before why not ask for what you did what you need we did that this gives the board an alternative to consider um, as you're considering the next operating budget for FY 20 thank you Thank you, Ms. White, for that report. Thank you for taking the time, and thank you to staff taking the time to come up with options uh, for the board to consider. I know that there were other uh, questions that were submitted and other options also recommended by board members for evaluation. So, uh, board members, we will, uh, Ms. White and uh, Ms. Hen and I will uh, communicate together to define a timeline for submitting questions and receiving answers from the staff. Uh, so we will send that out in an email uh, to all of you. And again, I would just like to just uh, interject for one second just to thank our staff, um, m many of whom worked over this uh, weekend. Many folks had uh, off yesterday, but Many of us were working yesterday because this request or the directive that came in was, uh, that just came in just before, prior to the weekend. And like I said, we just got the letter um, today. So the, this, the adjustment was made over the weekend. And so many, many hours have gone into trying to make this adjustment to present to you tonight. So I just want to just add my, and lend my gratitude to our hardworking staff who are absolutely dedicated to children. So thank you for that.
And the board wants to echo that because we do know that there are short time frames that you are asked to do a lot of work. We know that there are a lot of needs and we hear them from our constituents, from our advisory councils, from our personnel uh, of the things that we need to support our children so that we can improve their educational opportunities and also their educational outcomes. So we absolutely do appreciate that. And while we have serious work ahead of us, we need to just all focus on working together for what's important for the children. So the next item for our board agenda is item L, board member committee updates. And I would just uh, go around the room, starting there with Ms. Mack. Um, this is in reference to JMI 604-19, the mathematics program review. After much discussion, a recommendation um, for a change in the audit's term and initial scope um, was made and pending gathering some information, it will be brought to the full board for its consideration. The Building and Contracts Committee did not meet today, <coughs> seeing as we had just one contract to approve, and there are no other updates. Thank you. Mr. Kuhn? Uh, the Audit Committee meeting met on um, January 16th, um, reviewed the work plan, the internal work plan, uh, the, the position that was just added, um, the budget, and um, uh, principal audit results for FY19 and um, and then on January 18th on Friday we met with the external external audit company UHY for an initial review of the draft um, so just a quick comment uh, there are a number of comments specifically to the draft since it's an initial draft. I've already provided over 30, 35 comments back to the auditor and we'll be working back and forth to complete the, um, the audit draft so that it's presentable to the board uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. And the Policy Review Committee is going to be holding its first meeting on for this t year 2019 on monday february 11th the committee will continue its review and evaluation of discipline policies and we look forward to our new committee members that will be joining us uh, to do that very important work for our children uh, next there is agenda item m which is information which is reports that are available in on board docs so please uh, look through those and direct any questions to the superintendent agenda item n announcements our announcement is that the next board meeting will be tuesday february 5th at 6 30 p.m here in the greenwood building e and with that the meeting is adjourned <laughs>